All right, so first of all, let us check out what we want to play, right? We want to play a Fire Castle Sorcerer, which means we're going to be a Demolitionist and a Arcanist. Now, Demolitionist is a bit more about fire damage than Arcanist. Arcanist is more like Aether and Elemental based, but also has good fire support. Um, we want to basically level with a fire skill. <clears throat> And the way we're going to do that is with Blackwater Cocktail or AoE. And then for single targets, I don't know, we could play something like Cancer Bomb or Grenado or Motor Trap. Uh, Cancer Bomb honestly has like pretty good like AoE already anyway. Um, so there are like multiple skills you can do. You can also do Sun Jacks if you want, but I mean that's usually like not fire based, it's like Fizz Lightning based. Uh, usually. Um, but I think it's like. Cocktail is good AoE, good damage early. Um, not necessarily the best single target, but it also has like debuffs, like resistance reduction and damage reduction on enemies. So you kind of want to like play Cocktail almost always on any demolitionist anyway. So since it's like the the big constant, uh, the big constant in like all of these fire demo builds, we're gonna pretty much like level with Cocktail, um, get some points from, like from Flame Touched. Get some movement speed from here, from the Vindictive Flame one that gives you like movement speed, attack speed, custom speed, right, total speed. And basically like just max out those three here. We'll get some defense from Blast Shield, and we're gonna get some like additional resistance reduction later on from Thermite Mine. And that's basically like the core setup more or less, right? Maybe some more points here, depends. And you also want to <clears throat> use the high potency um, transmitter. Basically, as soon as you hit 10 points, because then this actually feels smooth to play, then you don't have to like spam it. You can just like throw it once and like in peak AoE and like everything dies. And what you can then do to like um, use as a filler is just a component skill. We're gonna use something like Searing Ember, for example. Um, say, for example, the first offhand you find is like Kylex Skull or like Harvest Conjuring Bone. Right, and then you just pick a. I mean, you're gonna craft a flint core bolt once you have the smith. Uh, once you're level 15, you can craft this one. Before that, we're just gonna use like a searing ember, wherever it is. Searing ember, searing ember, hello. Uh, it's probably earlier on because it's lower level, there it is. And this one allows you to like use a fire blast. And chilled steel is like another one we might also use early to like use ice spikes to deal with like fire resistant enemies like the burning zombies early on. <clears throat> and then you basically want to plan your build in a way that you um, can look at the item database, go for like item skim out of fire, go for demolitionist, go for canister bomb here. I mean, or rather, like with a cocktail, right? And then you click on the rares only, legendaries you're gonna like, worry about later. And you can basically like see all the items that like support back for the cocktail and choose your items accordingly. Like choose the bosses rather that you wanna f or like the mobs that you wanna farm to get these items accordingly. Like for example, Zarthusadan's codex, right? Zarthusadan, the uh, like mini boss from Steps of Torment, who's like guarding the gates there, will convert the cocktail to, to fire. Um, so like really, really, really good like black of cocktail item here. We're gonna use that. And the offhand. We might want to get uh, oh, this is a chaos cocktail. We don't use that. We can use like a Slathsar's crest from the ancient grove later as well, because I'm giving us like some additional fire damage and cocktail. Um, unless we want to use like the grenado metal, maybe as long it. And you can also use the Udenborg flame stripe. Now, if you want to use Canister Bomb as a secondary, you just like do the same thing, but like for Canister Bomb, right? You look at Canister Bomb and you see, for example, Molten Claw Slicer giving you like conversion and like more damage to Canister Bomb. That's pretty nice here. You could also do the same with a Flesh Warped Incinerator. We're not gonna play that one though because it's a two hander and you want to use the offhand from Zarthusan on it. And then for Grenado, um, this is for Lightning. Mostly. Actually, it's like. Fire lightning, no it, no, it converts fire to lightning. This is like a classic, like a classic crate debate, right? You have like percent fire damage on an item that converts fire to lightning damage, basically rendering this useless. It's a classic bait right there. Tender. Hmm. We might play a Vegasaur's Heart 
I mean, we are definitely gonna play this one, right? Like, plus one to all skills to demo. Really, really amazing. Uh, recharge to grenade, fire damage to grenade, right? Really, really nice. Just amazing. Uh, Comments about, as I said earlier, like maybe this one instead of Slavzars. But like, recharge to grenade. And if you wanna play, what is it? Mortal Trap. You might have to use a different offhand than their Thusalans. That's when you get later on in Act 6, though. So. You can definitely like level with cocktail and sell through the lens until you get this item. And that's pretty much all you get for motor trap there. Alright. Um So yeah, let's put like Zar Thuzalans over here. Yo, Centrix, welcome on. You haven't watched me in like six months, but your subs. Yeah, somebody like gifted 50 subs the other day, that was pretty crazy. Why not stun jacks leveling? No, I never did Sunjax, really. Um... Okay, so this one, right? And then here we just go for like plus one demo. Like Bigazors. Uh, maybe I should like put the low level ones first. Right, Darth. Right, level, level 20, level 20 plus. This one is level 40 plus. I think. When you actually like need the Thuzalan, like he's he might be too low high level to like even drop this one. Like maybe you only get the 30 wood, 32 one. Not quite sure. Then you also wanna make sure to get like plus one all skills to demo as soon and as quickly as possible. Like for example, this one chosen called from Comets Chosen. This means that we want to choose Comets Chosen as a faction to side with, right? But we are able to craft this one. Later on you can also do pot battery to like get the chains of orders. But this is like very very easy to get and very pretty much guaranteed. Um, now for the for the weapon. <clears throat> if we wanna play what is it, canister bomb, right? We would use the the axe, the modern claw slicer. You can do this. Or you can just use the Cocktail Flame Strife later on, right? The Udenborg Flame Strife. Also pretty nice. For Relic, we can do the Conflagration Relic once we have the blueprint for this, which we are gonna basically get once we are in Act 6, because you can just like vendor farm all the relics, all the blueprints there. And over here, there was only the Slathzar's Crest, or you play Grenado uh, for single target, like Hyman's badge, right? This one looks like a lightning item, but it's actually fire lightning and does not convert to Grenado, so you can still like, just use this as like a physical fire Grenado as well. Um, you cannot farm this one though if you're sided with Comments Chosen, because you need to like kill Comments Chosen. I mean, you cannot farm this from like killing enemies, but you can just go to a vendor and farm it from the vendor instead, so you get it anyway. Like, it's no big deal. Um, it's not like the Skybreaker Circle that you need to get when you're playing Virus Might that you really cannot get unless you're sided with the Vigil. Uh, yeah. The other slots are usually kind of like filler slots, you just like use whatever you find um in order of priority like your priority order here would be first priority is like anything that gives like skill points to your main damage abilities second one would be like resistances third one like other defenses maybe some health um and then like percent fire damage percent burn damage offensive abilities also good um but it's like that's less important honestly than like resistances on on these slots here um, because you're gonna get like skills and the devotions, I mean damage rather from devotions as well and from your skills as well and from your like like skill modifiers like this one and this one that's like usually enough damage already but, uh, let's put the the Kaimon's Grenado medal here as well, there we go yeah, there's some MIs that like are a bit better like Cronless has like plus 3 cocktail for example, yeah that's pretty good like really, really good. I mean, you can also like just like search for um, plus skills to to stuff, right? I mean, motor walkers. Maybe you find these like blue, kind of easy-ish to find. Like uh, boots might be good, right? Okay. 
Got a little 65 item here. <clears throat> you can also search for the like demon fire and agonizing flames. Yeah, I mean, you get the stuff later from like Nemesis. Yeah, I mean, there might be stuff that you get in affixes as well. But yeah, other than that, you can also like fill these slots with like faction items if you don't find like anything that's like useful for you. Level 40, Grammar of the Wool, yeah. Gonna not be that easy to get. Alright, um, so what do you want to go for for devotions? I mean, you want to go for fire damage, you can just like type in fire damage also in the game to like get a rough overview into like the direction that you want to be heading. So for fire build damage build, you want to go for like Ozin's Torch, for example, for Magi. Crystallized Witchblade, and you could, if you wanted to, like play something like Fort Flame Torrent or like Aether Fire early on, if you want like additional damage early on. But usually, I rather want uh, more movement speed or like more health, I uh, like healing instead of that. To be honest. So how it's gonna look like in the game, right? You're not gonna be able to like see all of them right away. You will see the tree like this. And uh, first of all, I always like to go like two points jackal. That's pretty much something you want to do on like literally any build. <laughs> it's just like really, really good. Um, and then you might think like, okay, why not Rowan's Crown, right? This one is also like very popular for like elemental builds. And you don't really need Rowan's Crown when you have Agonizing Flames. These type of resistance reductions do not stack. So you don't need to do that. So what you want to go for is just like Solar's Witchblade. And for healing, you might want to go for something like Behemoth. Or Bat with Conversion, or just like Dryad, for example. Like those are really, really good for for healing. Yeah, welcome guys. Wh Vibes, Flames, Naomi, Grey Sheep, Thank you, Kerum, Azimov, Blender, how you guys doing? The lowest level one doesn't even drop for Zathuzeron? Yeah, I think so as well. Mm, you can also go for something like Turtle, but okay, early on, okay, so we want to go for like the movement speed here on Jackal, right? Then you want to go for... Probably just Spider, honestly. <clears throat> I mean, you can, I think it's like Scholar's Light. I feel like it's actually early game better, but the problem is that you are missing like one green for a witch blade. And the Raven? Not terrible, but it's honestly just worse than Spider at this early stage, in my opinion. So we go for like Spider, we finish the Jackal, get the Witchblade. Now we need more green anyway, so now we could go for... A Raven, for example. Grab the Magi. You want more red for the Ulzin's Torch, which you could, for example, get from Behemoth, right? So for behemoth healing, you need blues. Uh, you can also grab Viper. Viper gives you like percent elemental resistance reduction. The problem is, this kind of resistance reduction would only be applied via anything that has weapon damage. Um, well, your Searing Ember has 20%, and your Bigger Firewall has 28%. That's at least something. Not, not a lot, though, but at least a little bit. You could go for Viper, that is like totally doable technically. You could also grab the Turtle, right? When you have like Turtle and Viper, then you can go for Behemoth. When you have Behemoth, you can remove this node here, you don't need this node here anyway. And you could remove a couple of greens as well, like... Honestly, you could remove Spider. Grab Hawk, remove the green here, and then you have Torch, right? Now you still have like 11 points available to you, as you can see here. And you could aim for something like either Korvac, or just like um, more defensive stuff like Phoenix. Or chariot. There's lots of options now, honestly. Or like Dryad.
you put the Eldritch Fire to Cocktail, you put the Merger to Thermite Mines, and you're going to be putting this to Flashbang. So this is kind of like the, the, the like early rough like setup here. And if you're like playing something like Grenado, you can like put Dryad to Grenado. Or, or Phoenix to Grenado. Phoenix, Chariot, stuff like that. Alright. I'll leave it as, like, I'll leave it like this for now. I mean, okay, attribute points, you wanna basically not go any cunning if possible. You wanna go like a mix of physique and spirit. For the most part, though, mostly physique. I think I'm gonna build like this because Arcanus is gonna give you like stuff anyway. Like, uh, spirit anyway. On the Arcana side of things, you kind of wanna only get like supportive skills. Um. Pretty much like this, like you want to one point all these first and then like put more points into like mirror, inner focus, maybe even notification later. And you also want star packed. Now, why star packed? You might think, like, what the fuck is an armor like a fire caster? Why don't you pick like reckless power? <clears throat> well, it depends a bit on like what kind of fire caster exactly you're playing, but usually these are like rather cooldown based, and this one gives you cooldown reduction. So at least like 9 points for like 9% CR is pretty good. If you're not playing a cooldown reduction based Firecaster, of course then Reckless Power is better. But usually you just want to like play Star Pact for the CDR. And yeah, I mean that's like the... The rough setup I would say. Alright. You can put this one in the build command, and then I'm also gonna show you real quick how to just like reset your like save file if you want to make do like a fresh start as well, and you have played the game before, but you would like to like reset your account. What you do is you go to your documents, my games, Grim Dawn folder. This assumes that you have cloud save turned off and you have only local saved turned on. Um, if you have cloud save enabled, like please check out where those save files are in the cloud save folder. And then like move them over here. They usually have a folder called save. And what I usually do is just I um, rename my save folder to like whatever that's not called save. So that I know what, what's in there, what kind of characters are in there. And then if you have no folder called save, then the character like the game will automatically create a new folder called save whenever you launch the game. So you're gonna launch the game here. And as you can see here, this will create a new save folder here in a second. There we go, there it is. So now you're playing on this account right here, basically. Alright. Alright, so we're gonna start a new beginner build here. Beginner, uh, beginner cock tail. Aha. Uh, of course, we're gonna play hardcore and gender. I mean, doesn't really matter. Whoever you wanna play, right? And we're playing single player main game. Nothing modded this time. I mean, you can definitely like play this character the same way in a in a seasonal environment. It would be no issue whatsoever. It would be just as viable there, of course. Let's go. You're not the b you will <laughs> It's kind of funny, okay, so Yeah, you got the lower note up here and you can kill some mobs here I just got follow botted, so I just have to like read this real quick here. What is view botting? View botting is a practice of artificially inflating the view. I oh, know, here, yeah, follow botting. It's when a channel is followed by a number of fake accounts. These accounts, this is like officially from Twitch. These accounts are used, virtually controlled by a computer script, blah, 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 and would attempt to look as real as possible. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, just like a thousand bots like followed me at the same time, to look at real, as real as possible. Mm -hmm. Definitely, as real as possible. As real as possible, yep. You survived, you were so fucking sick later, you're welcome in Oban. 
You get your ass in Gunslinger. Hmm, maybe next year. Or next season. You're creating an abuser doing a Seth build, yeah. So in these houses in Lower Crossing, right, there's like a lot of sorting items that you can go for. Um, this house over here has, for example, Francis's gun, right? Over here you will find the corpse of Francis with his note and his gun. And the gun is good because it has fire damage on it as well. Like, spawn some fireballs. So it does fit the theme, and it does, like, actually also help with the fire damage of the cocktail. Um, so the cocktail is a bit deeper down tree, right? As you can see, you can't, like, access it right away. But since we have the princess's gun, we can just, like, shoot some more mobs. And pretend uh, the other skills don't exist. The sorcerer with a gun, my class immersion. There's also Habit's great sword over here, which doesn't have any fire damage, but it's a big fat two-hander. So, like, when you don't have any skills, this one deals more damage, as you can see. Oops. Music might be actually a little bit too loud, right? Holy moly. It's, it's good music, but... Alright. And the third one is Allman's Axe over here. It's like a cold one-handed axe. Not really that useful for this build, so we're not gonna use it. Alright, there we go. One point in cocktail. We can start here. Throwing some cocktails. The problem is, like, with, as one point... The cocktail kinda doesn't do that much damage. As you can see, so you... Might as well just, like, attack the weapon instead. <clears throat> but don't be fooled by this. When I was playing Grim Dawn for my very, 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 very first time, I also started uh, playing, I think, as a uh, demolitionist, actually. And I was playing Fire Strike and then specking to Cocktail, like, I don't know, like, 4 or 5 at some point. And I put, like, one point there and was like, well, this skill is fucking garbage, right? Because it, like, does nothing. But I mean, at one point, it literally does nothing. That's not wrong, but... You need to put more points and also get the transmitter, and then it actually will do a shit ton for you. Alright, I mean, you also wanna save Faldus over here, don't forget about Svaldus. The rest of Lower Crossing you can kinda skip, it's whatever. I mean, feel free to explore though, like, this game has tons of, like, areas to explore, left and right and right and left. And, uh, there will always be some kind of, like, chest or something that rewards you in some way or form for, like, exploring. And also, I mean, the best reward for, like, exploring in a game like this is always just to, like, know how the maps look like. Just to know how the game like works and you know so that you just like know more about the game to be honest all about knowledge now i'm gonna like put two points in cocktail like one point in the, in the mastery bar um just to like get some more damage on the aoe of this cocktail and also at the same time to push for the high potency buff over here like a transmitter And yeah, you might also like find lore notes, and lore notes in this game do give you XP. So like finding and clicking on lore notes is never really like a waste. I mean, you can also read them, of course, like actually read them. The lore in this game is pretty good. The lore presentation is, well, a little dry because there isn't much voice acting. There's like barely any cutscenes, pretty much only one in the game, and like one before the game starts. But the actual writing and the actual lore is pretty good. So if you like reading, this game is worth a read. I mean... I kinda wanna get here maybe a bit sooner. So Kaizok here is the first boss of the first quest here, down here in the burial cave. And he has actually a chance to drop an offhand. Which, if we're lucky enough to get, will be very useful for this world actually as well. We did not get it. That's an L. Uh, oh well. 
We don't have it. It's fine. Another thing with items. Um, so white items are basically literally always useless in this game. You have this loot filter over here, left of your health bar. And you can just like disable whites right away. And you should always like enable showing double rares because you never want these to like not be shown. Um, even if you like do some other like stuff here, you can also like change uh, like mess around with this if you want to. Um, I usually don't, but it, it can help. Maybe the thing is like it it doesn't really help that much because ideally. You want to pick up all green items at least, and early on, like also yellows, some yellows, um, and then sell them as well. Because the items that you don't want to use yourself, you can just sell for iron bits, and iron bits are like the currency in this game, just kind of like your gold, right? And uh, you do also get iron bits just by like finding stuff, like finding iron bits. But most of the iron bits you're gonna get from like selling green items, so you do need to sell lots of items. Yo, Freddy Mercury, work one. Minion stuff is chill to level with, but you prefer to damage yourself? Yeah, same. I mean, I don't know, minion builds are kind of boring to me. But like, they'd rather trigger me because I'm just like not in control of like... Whatever is doing damage, right? If your minion is doing damage for you, sure, it's like easy to like sit back and relax, but... If the minion AI is like being a pega... Burging out, you know, then it's kind of... Kinda not that fun to play sometimes, at least in my opinion. Alright, level 6. We could just rush for high potency now, honestly. And we throw this down. As you can see, the fire lingers around a lot longer, giving us a like larger window to not have to worry about recasting it and just like attacking it while like standing inside the fire because we are a demolitionist and fire. I mean, fire does hurt us when it's like cast by enemies, but our own fire doesn't hurt us. When it comes to gear, right, always try to like look for resistances and like basically pick whatever gives you resistances. You will notice that you will get some of these like components as well, like searing amber and so on. And uh, this might be like a good opportunity to like go back to the Francis's gun now and I then put a searing amber here. And you can like right click on the component and like put it into like whatever you want, right? I mean, it will it will say on the component like where it can be used, like using all weapons, shield, castle of hands, and so on and so on. And um, some of these also give you active skills, like the uh, Searing Ember gives you the fireball, uh, or, or rather the fire blast right at the bottom. And this is a skill that you can actually like use, like right click on your skill bar here and like put it wherever you want to. And it's gonna be like my new default attack basically, so now we are... Kind of like a fire caster throwing a cocktail and like throwing fireballs. Pretty nice. Yo, Grigorif, welcome, welcome. Mokoko, welcome. Garden of Imperium builds are quite fun. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Those are, I mean, player scaled pets though, so I can kind of, I can kind of like get behind them and like play them compared to uh, like player, I mean, compared to pet scaled pets, to be honest. Now, you might encounter these, like, totems here as well. Um, they are usually, like... I mean, they're generally just, like, optional challenge content. But... They give you amazing gear, and they are not, like, that hard. I mean, they can be hard sometimes, but... Usually, if you're playing a decent build, it's not, like, that big of a challenge. So just, like, throw down your cocktail and, like... Build the stragglers with, like, the fireballs, right? We go. Yeah, that's gonna give you like a ton of items. As you can see. Uh, attribute points, we're gonna put most of them in physique. You do wanna put like in cunning and spirit what you need to like equip gear. But other than that, it's gonna be pretty much all physique, maybe like one or two spirit. Uh, yep. Can I quickly check this build just to say if it works or not? Havoc Tactician? Yeah, it works. Uh, I hope you don't mind me not taking a, an extended look at it right now, because I'm like... Just started doing this playthrough. You can check it out like, more in depth later if you want, but... 
for now. If it's fine for you to just like tell you that the item, like looking at the items, looking at the skills, glancing or everything for like one, two seconds. Seems like yes, it would work. You might want to pick up the seal though, the Inquisitor seal. Instead of putting as many points into um, the the deadly aim. I don't think deadly aim needs that many points, but other than that you can just like put whatever you want. Um, like all the other remaining skills into the seal. <clears throat> now for the skill allocation of this build right here. We have picked up the high potency and now we can finally put some more points into the cocktail. So I'm gonna like put one, two, three points per level here. Um, maybe get like one point in flame touched and also always put at least like one point per level down at the mastery bar. Um, Vindictive flame and flame touched are both like aura, like uh, not really like auras. This is actually an aura. This is a self buff only. But you need to activate them, right? So you need to um, put them on your bar and then like press them once, like this, for example, right? Uh, you can also use your secondary like skill bar. You can toggle either here or like using the shortcut, whatever you have like bound to. Um, and then put them over here, like Vindictive Flame and Flame Touch. You activate them once per session, switch back to your main bar, and you don't have to like worry about these anymore. You will see the buffs over here. So as long as these are up, you know your skill, like your buffs are up, right? Um, when it comes to key bindings as well, feel free to check this out as well. There are lots of things you can rebind in this game. Like, for example, I have a button to rotate my camera. I have a button to like quickly pick up items without having to hover over them. I have a button um, allocated here to show and hide like all items, for example. For example, if I press this button, I can still like show all the items that I'm filtering out. If I press another button, I'm like hiding all the items, which is useful sometimes when there's like a like a big amount of like a large amount of enemies around you and loot on top, and you might not able to be like you might not be able to see your enemies anymore. And you want to like quickly toggle off your items so you can like see the enemies easier and uh, not die to some like item clutter on the ground. Yo, Toma, welcome on. With NBA items. What is what is what are NBA items? National Basketball League items? Question mark? Yo, crap turtle Pokemon. Imagine a zero hit challenge in Grand Dawn. Mm. Imagine people doing ultimate from level 1 Gorstock challenge. I don't know why you would do that, right? People are crazy. Actually, it's kind of fun, I think. Alright. Um, you do want to go back to Devil's Crossing at least. Usually, like around Whitemar. Like when you enter Whitemar, you want to go back to Devil's Crossing. You don't want to proceed more. Um, but if you proceed, then make sure to click on this corpse here. Sudden Hollow, right? Around here. Because this one always gives you this offhand. Which, um, I mean, this one rolled off Corrosion, so it's kind of bad. But it always has, like, percent all damage, which is also fire damage. And if you get, like, off Scorching, maybe as a suffix, then you get more fire damage here. And you can then like, summon a... Like, you have a chance to, like, summon a pet as well along, like, alongside you. Which is pretty decent early game, honestly. And I would be using this now. If we didn't find a Arcanist's Ruined bo Bone of Scorching already. Which actually gives me fire damage and spirit. But I think I'm just gonna stick to this one for now. But anyway. What is this spam? Grim Dawn as a game is a lot more limited than others of its kind. Each class and skill only has like two endgame sets at most, and you have to actively do research in order to make it viable. There is no way for you to make Lightning AR work, because there is zero endgame support for that sort of build. What? Engine inferior performance, I mean what do you expect? Even ultimate is gear check, if after all you don't have the gear, you will then you will die horribly. It's like I used to do every single time. It seems like a heavy skill issue on that guy, holy shit. 
Yo, Xenonic Workman and Ran Ranch Cowpoke Workman. Daily Dose of Reddit. Dude, what kind of game are they, these guys playing? Are they only like playing Animal Crossing or something? Like, what kind of games are these guys used to? Let's go back to those crossing here. Average Grimdawn enjoyers. I mean, he didn't seem to enjoy the game that much. Alright, when it comes to um, your amulet and, amulets and rings, right? Early on you will find like copper bounds and silver bounds. For example, a claw fetish or like a silver amulet. You kind of want to go for like silver stuff early. Because uh, this stuff has like health regen. This stuff has energy regen. And honestly, at this stage of the game, you kind of rather need energy regen to like spam or cocktails. So if possible, try to like wear caster gear. Um, kind of like this one as well actually. Right? Because Castle Gear would have like energy regen as a implicit, like as a stat already on itself. This one also more energy instead of health regen. I mean, the way you regen is gonna be, first of all, you're not getting hit, right? You just don't get hit. <laughs> and, and second of all, um, you will have more health pots than energy pots early on. I mean, you can just buy either. You can just buy pots as well. Of course. Like from a vendor here, right? Over here. Oops. We have uh, pots here, right? Just buy the pots if you want. Or you can also like buy some silver rings if you want. You find some decent one that has like energy regen and maybe some resistances on top. That might be worth to buy, but usually you don't have to do this. No, we want to go back here to those crossing after doing like a couple of side quests that we did earlier, right? Um, like getting the scrap and so on, because you want to go into the stellar here, because completing that quest will give you a second bag, right? It's gonna give you like more bag space, and that is pretty good early game. Or like at any point, of course, in the game. Um, yeah, I mean, you just like put points here, put points down here. That's all you need. This is gonna be on Spewtube. Yeah, yeah, of, of course, of course. I was watching a bit of Blizzard this morning and he was saying that those types of players that he referred to as Timmy think they're experts at LE because the game is too easy. Yeah. I mean, we have the same problem sometimes in Grim Dawn as well, where like people think that like when they beat Warden Creek and Ultimate, they know like everything about the game and they they know like how the game works and uh, are like spewing like semi correct, semi false um, information on Reddit. Kind of funny. And LE, I can't see why LE has that problem too, because the game is pretty much piss easy until like empowered monoliths. Right? I mean, Grim Dawn, normal difficulty is kind of a joke as well. And Elite, if you have like a decent build, too as well. But yeah. To have a favorite concept character, like what do you like more? Melee range, pets, or casters? Uh. I mean, whenever I'm playing like another game, I feel like I'm pretty much always, almost, almost always playing like some kind of two-hander big bonk melee guy. Um, at least at first, and then I realize they usually suck, and then I'll play like a caster instead for the most part. I don't know, I like casters and like melee the most, I think. I mean, sometimes I like ranged as well. It depends. Well, pets is something I don't like that much, personally, but I mean, pets can be good, of course. 
And and totems can be okay as well. Like totems aren't as bad as pets because at least with totems you have to like think about like where you have to place them down and you have to like replace them. They don't like move with you. They're not quite as like passive in my opinion. But another totem. And let the green shower begin. Alright. Yeah, that's also like why I want to click on these totems because they are very early on already like a like superb uh, source of green items. It's a bit OP to be honest. Um, so basically, once you've had like your first green shower from like a totem like this, you can pretty much almost already just disable yellow items because honestly, yellow items and ground on aren't that good either unfortunately this is one of the like negatives i'm opinion about this game that the item balance i mean item balance is amazing between like greens blues and purples for the most part i'm not saying it's perfect but it's pretty good overall but like yellows and whites are just like um they might as well not exist and yeah i mean these are just like more stats as you can see, like just basically right click them and equip them. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not a fan of pets because it's like playing a support in a single player game. Yeah, most of the time, it f I mean, it depends. Like, some builds can be hybrids. Not really in Grand Dawn, but like in other RPGs, maybe you can play some like pet hybrid builds. The closest thing to like hybrid builds in this game are maybe like builds that use like player scaled pets heavily. Um, like Guardians and so on. Or Blade Spirits. But other than that, uh, yeah, pets feel kind of boring to me to play. You're not in control of the damage that your character or like your build is doing, doing and you kind of like just feel like a support bot in a way. Yeah, this sound basically. Now we do have, I think already like two devotions. You can click on the devotion screen over here, right? And we're gonna start, as I said earlier, like with putting pawns into Jackal. Because the third, like the second node in Jackal rather, this one here, with your six percent total speed, which is like the earliest movement speed you can get in the entire game when it comes to devotions. All other devotions will need at least four points in total, whereas the second node in Jackal only requires three nodes, like three points. Oh yeah, uh, being at the foggy bank rift, you should also make sure to not miss the slith cave here to the west, right? This slip cave to the west in the fog bank has another devotion shrine inside, so you wanna get that one. Audio? Audio's back? Wait, did a microphone uh, cut out or. Or just the game audio? I might cut off for like 5 seconds? Oh shit, oh no. Yeah, please, please tell me ASAP if it keeps happening. My mic has been acting a little bit weirdly sometimes in the past, or like in the recent past, unfortunately. So yeah, what I was saying was that, uh, like, uh, west in the foggy bank, right, there's this cave with another shrine. And this one has, like, a third devotion point, which you can put into the jackal here. So you get this, uh, like, total speed. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're not zooming yet, but we are certainly, like, noticeably quicker. That's nice. Never cut out for you. I mean, okay. I'm just saying it, it can cut out sometimes. Actually, uh, recently, unfortunately, and if it does, like just, just tell me. It's fine. Yeah, mic fix. Where's where's Mike 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 fixer Mike fix, Mike Mike fixer fix. Oh shit, Mike Mike fixer fix. There we go.
<laughs> my click. Yeah. There's another Sith cave here that you can explore if you want to. I mean, exploration never hurts. But it's not necessary in this case. Uh, you might notice that it is a bit harder to find shoulders early on, right? Um, let's equip the Milton's cask from the boss Milton that we killed earlier. With the mini-boss, the side quest boss there. Right, boss in quotation marks. The quest mob. And, well, there's one way to get, like, shoulders early, like, very early. You can port back to, like, Foggy Bank or White Mile Rift. And similar to, like, where the... Uh, Slith Cave was to the left, or like these guys were to the left over here, who want three Slith Necklaces actually to make you a ring. Maybe we could also complete that one actually. Right. There is a third point of interest, like around here. So we're gonna go there in a second. Okay, this ring right here, right, the Slith Prime Ring. 12% poison, wit, and elementaries. I mean, and energy regen. Sign me up. Right, sign me up. Alright, yellows aren't really like worth selling, so just like drop them on the ground, whatever. Greens are like all you wanna sell, that's fine. Is it worth taking all that for fire characters? It should reduce fire resistance, but I'm not sure I understand how it correctly works. The problem with the Rexor Flash Freeze is, I mean, yeah, it's great early, and it's like, like, it's great early for like trash clearing, and it's great for like CCing trash. And it's great for like reducing fire resistance of trash, but the problem is it only debuffs enemies and deals damage to enemies if it actually also freezes. So everything that's like freeze immune, which is pretty much like 90% of all bosses, um, it's like, it's completely useless against that. So yeah, it's kind of like a, like a noob trap in a way. But can be still sometimes useful, but like don't expect it to like be good for bossing, like it's just terrible for that. Like it's useless. Alright, so over here, right in this like small like uh, peninsula, you have this ice exporters of Ulzin's Flame, or like of whatever it rolls on the FX. And these are, well, like guaranteed green shoulders for you to enjoy pretty much like super early on. Like if you don't know about this, right, this would be another like item. Or like another location where you get rewarded heavily for exploring. I mean, now I, I gave you the spoiler, I guess. Now you know anyway. Yo, new board, welcome on. Yo, thanks for watching the SSF guides as well. Follow the Promise Strike Druid video, and now I'm farming SR60.66 to prepare myself for the future characters. Nice, nice. Glad you enjoy, glad you enjoy. And I want to clear like half of the Arcana's Tree is a noob trap. Yeah, Arcana's Tree is. Honestly, if you compare the Militia's Tree to like Arcana's Tree, I feel like you can nowadays almost level with anything in this tree, right? I mean, Cocktail I think is still like the superior thing, but you can also do like Stun Drex leveling, you can do like uh, Canister Bomb leveling, you can do Grenado leveling, you can do Mortar Trap leveling, like all of these like work really well. They're all like pretty high damage abilities. I mean, Demo as a class is like generally like pretty high like base damage, I would say. And Arcanist? I mean, this is like great for trash, but like a bait for everything else. Kaldor's Tempest is just... It's just pain. Frozen is obviously good, it's like the best skill in the tree. And Aether Ray is also good if you have like some item support for it. And then there's Devastation, like right at the very bottom here, right? Which is also actually decent with items, but without I feel like it's just like way too high cooldown and... Yeah, it's not really like that great either. And then there's Penetis. Yeah, I mean, Panatis is a... Uh... People say Panatis is a meme, and people aren't wrong about that. I would say Panatis leveling is probably actually better than, like, Kaldor's Tempest leveling, though. Like, all the memes aside, that's probably a better leveling skill than Kaldor's Tempest. Like, it's pretty bad, but it's not, like, actually the, ba the worst skill on the tree. But the thing is, like, spamming a normal fireball it's already better than Penetius, and Kaldor's Tempest is worse than that, so, yeah. I don't know. Kinda weird. Penetius is the fashion over function skill. Fashion souls skill, kinda, yeah. Yo, Buhor, Workman. 
Not speed leveling, log in. <laughs> Doing chill, slow leveling today. Like fresh start, beginner friendly leveling, yep. Basically oh, like oh, YouTube crap. leveling, you could say. Lore, lore through? Mm, we're not going that slow. Going that slow. Alright, whenever you see like polished emeralds, right? Un unpolished emerald, unsucked, unsucked uh, dog deck, I mean what? Uh, unpolished emeralds, right? You just use it and uh, put it on your gear here, right? And you just use these. You will find these like left and right anyway. Like the emerald uh, inflation in this game is absolutely insane. You find speed leveling boring and doom down because of devotions, because of having to like jump around for devotions. Now, there's a decision to be made here, right? Side with Angram, the Master Smith, or side with Duncan, the Apprentice Smith. And for endgame, you always want to go for Angram, right? He's like the superior Smith for ultimate because he has like different um, like completion bonuses when he like crafts stuff. But for normal difficulty, honestly, if you're playing a Demolitionist and you also might want to play, for example, Fire Strike, you should probably start with Duncan. Because Duncan Donuts can not only make the best donuts, but he also... Um, well, he has, for example, the unique ability to craft a gun that has, like, bonuses to Fire Strike. So yeah, if you're especially like playing a Fire Strike character, that is just, like, very, very, very nice to have. Now we gotta bring back the hammer to the guy there. Right, and now we're gonna go back to Devil's Crossing. Or like, we can go back to Devil's Crossing. Actually, no, we're gonna do that at level 15, right? There's like no reason to do that before level 15. Because most of the like craftables that are like useful from him uh, are like. Um, like only use about level 15 and higher. Now, at level 10, the game like kind of like wants you to already like pick a second class. You don't have to. You can just like close the window and like go back to your demo tree and choose your second class like whenever you want, right? Like you can do it as late as level 100 or like just never even. Um, we're gonna play a sorcerer here, so we're gonna choose Arcanus at some point. But for now, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm like, put one pointers here. Like, always put like one point in the bar and like some skill points here and here, for example. Yeah, we entered this cave for another shrine. We want another devotion shrine. Another devotion shrine means another point in the devotion tree. We're gonna work on spider into which blade next. If you want like more immediate power when it comes to damage, sure you can go for like Fiend or Imp. I kind of think that's kind of unnecessary, but you can if you want to. Is it possible to play Fire Trolls and Sky Shop with a Conduit and have a good build roll? Uh, you can have like a decent build, I think, but it's not going to be better than a Trozen build, like a like a Trozen set Cold Lightning build, as far as I know. Unfortunately, not better than that. It's not really like worth it to do it, to be honest. Okay, we have a new offhand here, Bile Ridden of Scorching. I mean, Bile Ridden is just acid damage, that's kind of trashy, but... Scorching is far damage at least, so we're using that. Um, there are two more quest mobs like over here in the western corner of this map. Balros and Hagra, these for the Flesh and Iron side quest. Fire resistant Burbage zombie side. And the zombie fire caster so far is still dying. There's no problem with those. Oh yeah, level 14. If you're lucky enough to get like the final march, for example, 
Uh, just equip it, run it. Just equip it. Make sure to always check uh, if you have the required amount of attributes for your gear as well. And if necessary, like put more points in cunning or spirit. Otherwise, just put everything in physique. At least on this build. Not on all builds. Like on many builds, you actually want to look all, like very cunning heavy or something even like spirit heavy, especially for endgame. But on this, you probably will like put all points in physique even for endgame. Oops. Yeah, save the Algrim guy. He's uh, he's a friend. Not you. Not move your source files while combining videos. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a pega. I mean, depending on what program you're using, it might work, but usually it's just like rip. All right. We have arrived in Burwich, right? In Burwich arrived. And here you will encounter these guys, right? These Ember Guards. Now these seem like very fire resistant, as you can see. What you can do, though, is you can put a chilled steel on your offhand, for example, and just, like, use Ice Spike to finish off these guys easily. There we go. Easy, easy clap. Alright, just use Ice Spike for these guys, and use your Cocktail and so on for the rest. Later on, you won't have to do something like that because you're gonna just uh, scale your damage with like resistance reduction, so you will reduce the fire resistance of enemies. There is no such thing as an actual like immune enemy in this game. There are enemies with like high resistances, like those Ember Guards, but you can just reduce the resistances with other skills like debuffs, and then they're like no issue. Ice spike on fire sword that's cheating. Play my way, match. Don't have friends, smile. Do you guys have a friend link, like a link to the emote? What you could also do is you could also like put more points on demon fire to also deal chaos damage and try to kill the Emma guards with chaos damage instead. Thank you. Makima feet, wow. <laughs> nice, nice, nice try. Nice try. Am I still getting new bots, by the way? I think I've stopped. Okay, the last bot followed me like 15 minutes ago. Okay. How many follows am I at now? Like. Uh... It wasn't me who paid for this bullshit, but somebody like fucking rebutted me, or like follow botted me rather. Or the the Twitch already deleted them. Okay, so I went from. I had 6,400 followers, right, at the start of the stream, and now I'm at 7,775. Because like somebody like follow botted me with like 1,400 followers almost, or like 1.4, at uh, 1.3k. Why? What for? What the fuck, dude? What's even happening? Feels weird, dude. Was your 1.4k AI friends? Yeah. I guess you're Evan Workman. Alright, over here in the abandoned waterfront, make sure to like, kick on all the chests and make sure to have three fabrics before leaving this place. Because you need them for a side quest. And you wanna do side quests. Because side quests also mean additional reputation. And reputation in this game is like a like a secondary like hor horizontal like um <clears throat> progression, right? Similar how you progress your mastery with levels, your devotions with shrines. You also progress faction reputation by killing enemies and by also doing quests. And quests Give you like way more reputation than killing enemies usually. So you don't wanna miss like side quests. At least you don't wanna like miss out on side quests that are like kind of easy to do and more or less in the way anyway. Imagine if those 1.4 new followers all spammed Horn of Gander. 
Well. Just well. There's already two bots in chat spamming horn, I see. They test bot programs on small streamers so they can then nuke big streamers next or just sell it to them. Maybe. Maybe I'm the hamster. I am the hamster here. Pound the warden's uh, whatever it's just called house, I guess. Mansion. Get the lore, right? Right click the lore for XP. Don't throw away the fabric. Throw a cocktail. Yep. Yep, cocktail. Now in the Warden Cellar you might encounter a Ethereal Totem. If you do it, don't blame me if you die. Uh, but if you follow the spell and you don't get hit, you will not die anyway. See Totem, click Totem, yep. That is the law. I right, click it. They spawn like mobs from, I don't know, like three or five or six. Or four. So like, like three, four mobs, I guess. But yeah. Just throw down your cocktails and try to not get hit too much. Easy clap. Easy clap. Now, another reason why you always want to click totems is because they are a very, very good um, way of getting blueprints. And blueprints are basically like another way to progress your account. Not only like your character, but like your entire account, basically. And yeah, I mean, with blueprints you can craft stuff, so that's nice. That is indeed nice. Thunderstruck of the boar? I mean, it's probably better than my current one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, what we can do now is we can also buy a medal, right? You can see I don't have a medal yet. Uh, you can buy one that's just cheap and maybe has resistances on top. Resistant of mending, for example, cold lightning rust, sure. Let's get it. An ethical start, maybe not. Why? What do you want? Uh, Rene? Um I mean if you wanna go to like a certain place. You can spare him and get a key to enter another like certain side dungeon that you can skip, but you can also do it. And I guess we're actually gonna do it here. Why not? We also have the smith finally, right? Duncan is here. He's in town. He has arrived. 
And there's a couple of things that you can craft right away that are like ridiculously powerful. Like for example, anti venom cell. You can craft and put in your belt. This one gives you, I mean you can put it like anywhere, but it's best in belt. Right, this gives you like regen, armor, and poison resistance. Now why is it best in belt? Because belt has armor, right? All the other slots also have armor. If you look at how armor rating and armor works in this game, you have a certain chance to be hit on hands, shoulders, chest, arms, feet, and legs, right? Um, negating physical damage. At by base, a 70% effectiveness, meaning like if you have 88 armor rating in your head, you have a 50% chance to be hit on your head and absorb 88 physical damage, right? But actually not 88, but it's 0 0.7 times 88 because your armor absorption is not 100 yet. Now, if you put this anti venom solve on your boots, for example, the 24 flat armor on the boots, I mean, on this component, will only be added to the boots. If you, however, put this on the belt, right, the 24 flat armor on the on the component will be added to the belt, and belt armor is global armor, right? So if I put, um, you know what, let's crop two, right? Uh, if you have one on your I don't know, like on your on your pants, uh, on your on your boots, for example, right? You will see armor rating is 77 right now. On the feet, for example, it's 90. On your legs, it's 60. Right? If I put this on the on the boots, it's only going to increase the feet armor, right? So average overall is 80 now, and feet is 114. Legs and everything else still unchanged, right? Whereas belt, if I put it on the belt, it will change not from 77 to 80, but from 80 to 104, and all of these numbers have now gone up. So, whenever a component has flat armor, like the Antivenom Solve, always prioritize the belt slot over anything else. Um, then also to increase your armor absorption rating, you can craft scaled hides. Now these you want to put usually in your pants and your shoulders. And now we are at 98% armor absorption, right? So instead of before having like 80 armor in your head, like 80 times 0 0.7 rather, Right, you have like 80 times 0 0.7 equaling 56 physical damage absorption. We have 112 times 0 0.98 now, so 109.76, right? So just by crafting like one, two, three components, this one doesn't even affect the helmet, right? We went from effective armor rating of 56 to 110 in the head, right? So basically like doubling our armor of the helmet. And that's why like... Uh, Armor absorption is important, and putting flat armor in your belt is important in this game. Noted, noted, yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, what else can we do here? We can also craft a... Like, something for fire damage, right? We can craft a enchanted flint and flint core bolts. If we had scrap, we waste all of our scrap, like, crafting and battle solves. Um, next time maybe like craft this first before you craft this crap. I mean it's not crap, it's still good, but these will give you more damage, these give you like more defense. Waste scrap noted yet. What you can do is you can also buy scrap from vendors, right? One, two. Three. I mean I need four though, unlucky. There's still like one missing. I guess we need to like find one more. Have you found good there warden? But I mean, by the time we do select like, another quest and then come back here again, they will have like maybe some new like scrap restocked. And we can just get it there then. Actually, I think one of these quests gave me more scraps. I have six scrap now instead of three. So we can still actually craft a um, flint core bolt, for example, which can be put into a caster offhand and or a gun, right? Caster offhand or crossbow or gun. This is also the fire strike gun that I was talking about earlier. That you can craft only at Duncan. This one cannot be crafted by the other guy, uh, Angram. So that's like the reason why if you're a demolitionist early game on normal difficulty, you want to actually sign with Angram, uh, Duncan and not Angram. So you craft this here, right? And we can put this instead of our Francis gun now and put the flint core bolts on top of this. Now you might think, Wait a second, it says like minus, minus 317 damage per second, right? Why the fuck does it say that? Well, it says that because, first of all, 
um, it compares this item without a component to this item with a component. And if you hold on, for example, the control button, you will like, disable the component and then you can see this is actually like plus 48 instead of 370, right? If you ignore the component, you just compare this without components and it's actually more damage, right? Um, also, of course, you will not be able to like, use your normal fireball anymore because it was on this one. However, we just use flint core bolts and get a greater fireball now, giving us just like more damage. So yeah, this is... Uh... So TLDR, we're winning at the game and the game is easy and... Uh... Yep. Let's go kill the warden. Yeah, the armor absorption is actually 20% of 70 and not additive, so it's like... If a component like this, Scaled Heights, has increases armor absorption, it multiplies the base 70% by 20%. So like 20 more is 84, and another 24, 20% uh, 20 more is another 14 more. So like it goes from 70 to 98 if you have two of them. Yes, yes. Also, there's more items here. I should have maybe like looked at first before like putting components in my gear, but it's whatever. We're so stacked now anyway, it's uh, whatever, right? Do I have a chance to bypass your armor? Nah, it's... Um, armor always works. But it's basically whenever you have 100 armor and you're getting hit by 100 damage and you have only 70% absorption, you will always take 30 damage on every single hit. It's not like 70% of the time you get zero damage and 30% of the time you get all the damage. Uh, it's just like, it has like, it's kind of like an armor effectiveness, you could say. And also if you have 2000 armor, you're getting hit by 2000. Wait, no, let's say you have 1000 armor. No, you have 2000 armor. But you get hit by by a thousand damage, right? If you have 100% effectiveness, obviously you take zero damage, right? If you have 70% effectiveness, you still take 300 damage. Because it still only, like, absorbs 70% of the hit. It's not like the armor is 70... Like, it's not like you have effective 1400 armor if you have 2k with 70% absorption. It's more like, no matter how small the hit is, you only ever, at max, absorb 70% of that hit. Sometimes having less flat armor with higher absorb is better than vice versa. It's almost always better, actually, because of what I just saw there. It's kind of stat built, to be honest. Yeah, the armor absorb stat is... maybe a stat that wouldn't need to be in the game, to be honest. On the other hand, you don't want to end up with Diablo 3, so... I'd rather have one more bloated stat in there than no stat at all. By the way, apparently the patch notes for Diablo 3 next season are supposedly really good. I don't know what's like supposed to be really good about Diablo 3, but... Maybe you guys have a link, or like, maybe you guys have an opinion about that. Always prioritize Sanctified Bone and Chest over Amazon and Crucible Superruns. I mean, at that point, you're just, like, fishing for, like, did another, like, another second of DPS, and you don't care about defense, so, uh, yeah. They at least did something the last three seasons. Like, at least they did something instead of nothing. Hmm. I mean, if those are the standards, then... Three megabytes per second? Uh, no. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I have no idea. Maybe, like, YouTube is throttling as well. Ooh, 
Wish my camera never moved. Ah, yeah, sorry, I'm like, addicted to rotating the camera. Yo, Kurt Plank, how you man? Welcome, on, welcome. On. How you doing? Peace Sunday. Warrior. Oh no, the clip. Ah, oh, fuck off, Tarnash. <laughs> Wait, or is it not that clip? Is it a different clip? Oh no, it's a different clip. Thought it's the, the English 5 or whatever clip. Bot spam. Mm. Yeah, because of someone, I don't know who or why or what happened, but I had a thousand three hundred bots follow me today. I went from 6.4 to 7.7 .7 follows, and I have no idea what to do about it, but I guess I just sit back and relax. It was ridiculous. Like, what can I do? The only thing I could do was, like, disable the follow alert. But I can at least like continue streaming in peace. Will Diablo 4 have Inferno mode? It's probably gonna have like some pretty hard mode for like some dungeons, sure. How about that? I have no idea. For a hundred dollars you can play Inferno mode. Imagine. My energy? No. You need to be a little bit careful with like energy management when you look spamming the point balls at the top here. You wanna make sure that you always have energy for your cocktail, that's like the most important thing. I'm pretty sure like Twitch is aware of like things like this happening and uh, I mean as long as they can't like prove that it was me like follow botting myself they 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 know that uh, it must have been like someone else like sometimes like people view bot streamers to like like thinking it gets them banned or something like that you know Honestly, these are just better. I have way more armor and like almost the same damage and some other like stuff on top. Yo, Goober, thanks for the follow. I assume you are actually not a bot. And also, Fleeter was here earlier following as well. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, guys. They are bots. I kind of doubt that, to be honest. Ban them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it finished? The warden's defeat is Get the hammer. The warden's so defeat. Yep. Defeated. So this is where you need the fabric, right? The three fabric. Uh, once you have achieved friendly status with Devil's Crossing, which you will get when you did like all the other side quests, you can give her the fabric up here and she will make you a a chest piece. There, thank you. Pretty nice, pretty nice. 
All right, we have basically done Act 1. We're done with Act 1, and now what you want to do is... If you have the Forgotten Gods expansion, you always, always, always... want to take a small detour into Forgotten Gods now. How do you get there? You talk to the guy over here, the emissary. Ah, I cannot speak of such things in this place. Uh, you follow him to the dark corner, because he offered you candy. And you end up being uh, in some kind of underground... Uh, I mean, what now? You are in the Conclave of the Three, and in this so, desert... The th go. There are people that you can talk to. You can check out tons of lore. Tons of well-written lore. If you are into, like... Basically, Warhammer Chaos Gods, then you're gonna love the lore here as well. Uh, you complete the this ritual here. Pay to win, yeah. Pay to win and pay to progress. Play to, play to, uh, pay to play the game, yeah, definitely. Now, you after this um, like ritual, you can choose to side with one of three factions. Bismil, Dreek, or Solal. And apart from law reasons, there's another reason that you might consider when like looking at... Uh, or, like, when like, considering which faction to choose here to side with. You want to look at their faction vendors are usually like marked by a yellow back symbol whereas the normal vendors are like a slightly more whitish like dollar uh, symbol and all of these sell two like emblems like two runes magic augments right um, that you can apply to your medals and each of these has a different movement skill right you have a vanish like a Point and click on enemies with a melee attack, uh, with a melee weapon only, kind of like charge. You have a leap, See you around. like a leap, obviously. You have a charge, which is um, kind of like the vanish, but also would have added the damage of the shield and the slower. You have the rift tear, rift tear rather, just kind of like a teleport. Well it's probably going to be the one that we we're going to choose here. And then down here you have the kind of Solile Yugal selling you the Rush and the, the Disengage ability. So yeah, choose whatever you want to play yourself. Talk to this guy and then choose a faction. We're gonna choose the Dreek faction here to get uh, access to the Rift Tear. The thing is, you will get access to all of these eventually. And... Um, Let's buy a couple more. So we just have like the, them in our inventory here, and we don't have to like go back all the time. Iron well spent. And uh, yeah, you will be friendly with all three of these factions, right? But the thing is, the one that you choose is gonna be friendly right away, and the other two are only gonna be like tolerated. So Come see what's left of my you can only buy these right away from Iron the faction that you choose right away. For the others, you would have to do like questing and stuff like that. Like, basically, you would have to do, like, some parts of these acts, of this act here. Which is not something we want to do right now. We just want to, like, proceed over here in Act 2. Um, yeah. So we're gonna just grab those, uh, like, metals, metal augments here and move on with Act 2. There's also a smith down here. And there's one component that I... I kind of forgot about the ward stone. The ward stone gives you like elemental and bleeding resistance as well as movement speed. And you can put it into your metal and your amulet, making it pretty darn OP for this level. Like maxing out all your elemental rest already at level 18. Because this game is for babies, as Kerplunk tends to say, and it is easy as fuck to get your resistances maxed out. I mean, I don't disagree with that, like, with that statement. It is pretty, pretty easy to max out resistances. And there you go, right. Zero Chaos Rust. I mean, you don't need Chaos Rust before, like... I have no more scrap. Wow. I was crafting so much, I can't even repair the bridge. GG noob. Problem is, or like, rather, no non-problem is, you can just buy scrap. If you are out of scrap and you can't buy more scrap, you can go to Lower Crossing and farm the... Old dump for scrap as well if you really need more scrap.
What were you linking? Ah, oh, the old Pokemon, by the way. Just link linking Purple Burglar Alarm in Scottish again. Alright, alright, that's a classic. A for add-ons, noted, yep. I mean, honestly, Grim Dawn without, without DLCs. I mean, Crucible you can skip, but the other two... If you're, if you're not playing those, then you're not like, like, not like actually playing the game, I feel like. Fair enough. Will I rip today? Will I rip today? I don't know. Take your bet. Another item, apart from the double-barreled pistol that you can grab from uh, Duncan, right? Would be actually this guy's torch, right? If you save this guy and his family, he will give you a ring later. But if you decide to... Well... Have him put his family on fire and then, like, kill him... Then you get his torch. Which is actually pretty good fire damage, as you can see. Rest in peace. So yeah, I mean, this torch better be worth it because the entire family actually died for them, for this one. Uh, any more scrap. What do you get for reaching this goal? 994.7 thousand? Ugdenblooms, holy fuck, dude. Holy moly. Alright, um... Now the problem with this torch is that... It is not a gun and it is not an uphand. So what you need to do is you need to put your... Flint core bolts in your uphand, right? So you can use the feature... From... This inventor here, Dardot. To, like, keep the component from the gun. And to keep the item and remove the component from the offhand. And you can like move the inco bolt over here. And ideally here you want like a enchanted flint for which I don't have the materials yet. But when I have, I will craft one as well. Would bring ice in this chat. What kind of ice? Vanilla ice cream? Fuck you. Vanilla ice cream for Maya. Ooh. Full light radius build when? Forge build. See totem, click totem, right? Let's show these undead some manners. Let's show these undead some light radius. Did you see the light? Did you feel the light? Almost choked in a duplo, Monka. Killing families for tortures. He's bad, man. What can you do, man? You are not the good guy in this game. I mean, you can play as the good guy or like pretend to be the good guy, I guess, but you're not really the good guy. Let's be real. Let's be real. You're killing like innocent ghosts, innocent ethereals. They did nothing wrong, right? Copium. Alright, let's go here and actually put my pawns in the scooter. Oh yeah, also I should uh, put my teleport on my bar. I mean, I, I got to the augment for a reason, right? Like, what am I doing? There we go. There's three more options here again with this guy. I mean, choose whatever you want to. There's no, like, right or wrong... Maybe? Maybe not? Who knows? <laughs> 
What's a better epic stand, light radius or block chance? I mean, block chance on the right birds can actually be decent. I guess. I mean, it's still not that great, but... Like, light radius is just always useless. Unless you're, like, blind. I mean, okay, if you're blind, it doesn't really help you either anymore, I guess. Light Ray just cures blindness, yep. <laughs> like, don't, uh, please don't uh, think that light radius means blinding radius. It's not the same. There are light radius builds in PoE. What does light radius do in PoE? Does it deal damage to blind enemies? I mean, what? Crunchy, crispy skeletons. There's an item that made a fireball back to scale with the light radius in PoE. Interesting. What the fuck? The cocktail was stuck on a, on a tree. Are you kidding me? Come here. What's the IQ of these boards, by the way? Like. Gotta be like below one. Why are they running into the fire? What are you doing? An AIQ? Do you Derek House? <laughs> yeah, true. You also like you always like call these guys bulls or something like that. I'm like, what? Uh, it seems like you need more light radius on your builds, Naomi. I don't know. Are we born talismaning? Not yet, but almost. I mean, very soon. But here we have the Giga Bee. Queen Bee, rather. It's not called Giga Bee, that's not an actual word, is it? The Omega B, the Alpha B. Getting some relics, nice, nice. So we got this to the Bone Talisman from the Rover Elder, and uh, they tell me to return it, right? And you can return it or keep it. Ah, yeah, yeah. You get wrecked by a bee. True. Wrecked by bees. You're not the only one to get wrecked by this bee, actually. There are other, other people that also die to bees at some point. See you around, Ulven. This is an evil character playthrough. Yeah, I'll also side with comments chosen, so it's pretty evil, honestly. Uh, I was gonna do what? Right, I have a chest. Bad chest. Holy, what is this? Resistant of the Flesh Hulk? Look at all those rests. It's like five different resistances. Pierce, fire, poison, alley, po it's done. I mean, okay. Let's get it, right? Just get it. Now, what can you put here? You can put, for example, more armor absorption, right? Ancient armor plate. 
Ancient Evil. I mean, what's now? Ancient Armor Plate. I could also use the one from. Poison Rust. I'm down at 69 Poison Rust right now. That's pretty nice. You could also use Gunslinger's Jacket. That's where you can do weird pistols. Um, I'm not really interested in a pistol build right now, though. It would be nice, right? I mean, or is a nice option. In general. <clears throat> GG noobs. Also for the gloves, you can put uh, several things. If you're playing like an attack speed case base character, you want to put like consecrated wrappings that give you like chaos rest and attack speed. Um, if you're like a casting speed based character or you need more leech, you can put like restless remains. Otherwise, you can always just put like unholy inscription for like bit and bleed rest. Yeah, GG noobs. And now we go... We have found this portal, so now we go back to, like, the foothills, for example. Did I win last league, by the way? No. Show the ring, it's just water. Here, you found the elder, right? I'm sorry. And then, you can give it back. Or you can be evil, you can be the ancient evil yourself. You can just lie, right? Just lie to get to the... Radek call the bone talisman for yourself. Now to say Radek slot gives you like 5% physique cutting spirit, I mean whatever, right? It also gives you the mana infusion skill, which you can just put in your bar again, and uh well, this is kinda like a pot, like an energy pot. But it also gives you like hundred percent damage. Um additively, not mul multiplicatively. Uh, mul 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 I can't talk. Multiplicative would be like absolutely OP. Now, this is just additive, but it's still good at this point in the game, honestly. Like it's still fine. Uki won, his character was very tanky, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boner talisman, <laughs> a rap god. Uh, kinda, not. I wish. Maybe next year. Alright, let's go and also go back to Devil's Crossing and tell them that we killed the other ancient evil called the bandits. I don't know. There was some quest mob there that like just got one shot. Well, you worked here. We have to hit them hard and We have to hit them hard and fast. Yep, yep. Let's, see what Let's go and hit them hard and fast. Yeah, that's also true. You get three different versions of the talisman depending on the difficulty that you're playing on. Normal, elite, and ultimate will give you like different talismans. But honestly, in my opinion, like the one on normal is like the only one that really matters because the other two. I mean, they're better than this one, of course, but by that time, you will have, like, better relics, usually anyway. Or, like, you should be using better relics any anyway. So, usually only the one on normal matters. Right, play the troll, right? Ban the troll in Twitch chat. Warhammer will win the future. Which one? I mean, there's Warhammer Fantasy, which is more like old-school fantasy. Uh, and then there's 40k, which is in the future. Now here in the Four Hills, right, you have this, like, uh, arena with, like, former PvP winners, like, for example, Stadion Elric. Um, Reddit loves these guys, right? Like, Reddit always, like, has rage posts about these guys because they, like, perma-stun the character and, like, they're unkillable and they always just die. I mean... No, man, like, just, just kill him, right? What can I say? I'm cheating? Yeah, I have like more than zero stun rest on cheating. The wrong Aldrich? The other one is even easier, what are you talking about?
It was Stunjax, yes. It was the Stunjax one. Literally didn't see me getting stunned. What do you mean? No, he perma stuns, right? Like according to Reddit at least, he perma stuns. <laughs> Also, he like always one shots you. No, I mean, okay, the thing is, if you have actually like a decent amount of armor rating and also armor absorption, and at this level, like 150 is already enough, it deals like no damage. Because most of his damage is like lightning and physical, and against lightning, you can just have like 80% lightning dress, and against physical, you can just have like 100% armor absorb. And uh, then you just kill him. Only the real hacker mans can hack the computer or hack the game. Honorless. <laughs> Wait, let me let me let me check real quick what he's what he's called right now. Honorless is pretty good, but I don't think I called him Honorless yet. Uh, uh. Honorless might be better than the current name. The one I have right now is close, but that one might be better, yeah. Can't wait for all the salt and the new gold ambushes. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. What does build have to be careful about the ambushes of playing season mod? Okay, so whenever there's a, there's a ghost ambush with this character, what you do is you throw a cocktail and then you run away. You throw a cocktail and then you like run around in circles. You throw a cocktail and run around in circles. You throw a cocktail and run around in circles. It's kind of what you do. I mean, you can probably also just face tank some of them. But most of them will just die to like throwing a cocktail, right? Yeah, killing Piranha might be pretty slow because of her like blast shield and like high fire rus, I guess. Actually, does she really have like high fire rus? Not even sure about that. Alright, see totem, click totem.
Hello, there is Crowley. How are you? I mean, as you can see right now, the Cocktails AoE, I mean, rather single target damage is falling off a little bit. And, uh, but one of the reasons for that being is that, well, Cocktail is not the best single target ability in itself. But also we don't have like any gear supporting our Cocktail yet. And we also don't have to have like any resistance reduction from the agonizing flames yet. How was the Wilson revisit? Um like that. Another like juice XP perk here. There we go. XDD moment, yeah. Imagine saving your character, right? Like such a advanced concept. Too advanced for Wilson. Wizard is just powerhouse? Yeah. It's pretty strong. Is the new patch already out now, right? I don't think the patch with like my balance changes or like the, the balance changes that the Grimer did due to my feedback. The one isn't out yet, I think. Evil playthrough, right? We kill all the scammers. We just energy armor and hold crown the area with zero pure stress, zero damage taken. Energy armor was one of the blood absorbent. I mean, yeah, the thing is, yeah, 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 yeah that's it's just pretty, pretty broken, yeah, <laughs> like very strong. I think it kind of like falls off later, later though. I mean, CDR is always good, of course, but the values of that skill are like worse than the values of Inquisitor's Seal and like Ascension. Of course, it's permanent though. And I mean, flat absorption is generally like absolutely insane over the game. They do just spec Oathkeeper for Ascension on top. Yeah, and just stack it, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like Paladin then, except you can move outside of your seal. I mean, Oathkeeper in general is like a really, really, really strong class in general. It's what Templar is supposed to be, but never will be. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, especially like damage wise, I feel like the wizard in D3 is just like a better arcanist in many ways. I mean, defensively, it's are like it's um, debatable in my opinion actually. Like arcanist is also like ridiculously good for defense in Grundon already. Especially like I mean mavens and nullification. It's kind of same defense. I mean you don't have null, right? And you have the you have worse mirror. You have worse percent absorb, and you have um, no null. But you have flat absorb on top and lowers the serum. So I mean yeah, like overall I think it's it's worse defensively. And that's what happens. And like the defenses that it has, the wizard, makes it just as strong or even stronger like early for defense, but like for endgame I think it's weaker. Like for defense, not necessarily for offense. Because you have the Hydra, you have RR, you know. So to be more damage. <clears throat> you get some Fizzrus. On which skill is the Fizzrus right now for you? Aura, third node. The the energy, like the, the weapon aura, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's getting removed. They buy by to that. Or like it's getting put on, I think, the storm aura exclusive or something like that. Was it storm or the ice aura? Like one of those two. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the things that I told him as well, like, it's just like... The magic weapon line was, like, ridiculous on the patch that you're playing on, it's, like, so broken. Anyway, here in Odakobia, right, you wanna talk to these guys over here. You wanna get the shrine, and maybe do the totem here if you're, like, walking the other way around. Um, and then you wanna go down here into the ruins. What is the context for that mastery? Um, it is a... Yeah, we were talking about the Diablo 3 wizard class from the Diablo 3 mod program Dawn. There's a, there's a couple of mods, for example, the Diablo 3 uh, class mod that basically introduces the classes from Diablo 3 into Grim Dawn. Um, tries to like mimic the skills and playstyle that those classes have in Diablo 3 as good as possible in Grim Dawn and also as like item support and uh, yeah I played this mod like a couple of weeks ago and uh, the classes are getting also rebalanced based on my feedback that I had because uh, in the mod Unlike the Diablo 2 mod, for example, that adds Diablo 2 classes, but also adds like a whole like campaign overhaul, right? Like you basically remade Diablo 2 inside of the Grim Dawn engine. The Diablo 3 mod only adds classes and items, so the content you're playing is still like the same as standard Grim Dawn. So, in my opinion, and also the mod creator agreed that the classes to like feel good and like, actually feel good in like a proper Grim Dawn experience, it should be ideally like also balanced around the balance of like the Grim Dawn classes that already exist in the game right now. I know some people just like to play OP and nothing else, but I think only playing OP is like fun for... I don't know, like not for for too long. Like it gets boring real quick in my opinion. Double rare? Like which one? Oh, Thunderstruck of Kings? Holy shit, yeah. Just get it. Just get it. What can I say? I should also start making Grim Tools links for this character. I'm already like a little bit late with this. Should have made one in Act 1 already. But let's make one here.
Oh, I haven't gotten bored of the Tetris inventory game. I mean, Tetris is a good game, right? Is it not? Mm, that's good too. It has no code in lightning rods, but I have like too many of those anyway. Good one. Aid the fire or a prox thing of attack. Sure. Why not? I need new pants, like these have 50 armor only, what the hell? What the hell? Pierce kills for us, yep. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, we also got the deep broadest distinction from killing the guys from the pit. From the Odakovia PvP pit. Dueling is a gruesome, grueling contest where two tired souls battle in the dirt for supremacy. Only one will emerge the victor. Xanta actually like writing that lore for us. Hog you. Kinda cool. Kinda cool, not gonna lie. Alright, alright, alright. Grab all the... whoops. Let's grab all the components here. There we go. Resistances looking good. Put another rift tear here. Don't forget, you have to always like reapply these, this augment on the new item as well. Uh, we can put like one point of thermite mine here, since I have a item also like supporting that. This is like bonus damage on thermite mine, and then I rather want to go for agonizing flames first before like anything else. To be honest. Yo, Shola Toa, welcome, welcome. When seasons? Oh, what seasons? Oh yeah, we. We have seasons. Well, not active no. right now, but there will be another one soon, Tim. This year, that's for sure. Come, friend. Share glass, clean water. Right to biz. No. Come, friend. Friendo. Dude, thermite mines at this level, with like that, that augment, I mean that, that metal, just like kill stuff with thermite mines, like not even kidding. It's usually like a debuff only attack, like, um, like skill, but... Okay, that hands are like losing to thermite mines already. Hello. Cyber War. Wait, are you the guy who who like follow botted me? I think somebody fucking follow botted me today. Gathens would die to curse of reality though. Yeah, kinda. Oh, and they're not wrong. Alright, 40 points means we can start working on agonizing flames. It's nice. Am I going for Uzuin? Or which Uzuin? I mean... I mean like Uzuin Devotion, Uzuin's Torch, yes. Yes, yes, yes. LE campaign feels so noob compared to Grim Dawn, like has no soul. 
I don't know, the, the world building is pretty insane in Grim Dawn, in my opinion. Like, it's it's really good. It is, it is pretty nice. Like, the different areas with, like, different mobs. Is something that was very weak, in my opinion, in the Inquisitor Martyr game. I know, because you were, like, porting around from, like, one place to another, and... You had, like... Three or four groups of enemies, and after like four maps or so, you like saw them all, and like the rest of the game has the same mobs. <laughs> yeah, also, I mean, Grim Dawn, you have like one, like all of the maps are connected, right? It's like one world. Like, unless you're playing Shadow Realm, it's like one world. Like, the only time when you like aren't in that world is like when you're going into like some dungeons, but like even the dungeons are like connected to like the part of the world where you like enter the dungeon. Have I tried Torchlight Infinite? Mm, I've tried watching it and I couldn't even watch it so why even play it? That said, I think the game is actually pretty decent for people who like that kind of gameplay. Like if you like PoE's Zoom gameplay just like even more of that and less thinking, then I guess Torchlight Infinite is good for you. But let's not like say the game is bad. Like I think the game is actually like a pretty good game, like from what I've heard and saw, like seen. It's just the gameplay itself is uh, wasn't for me. Find the pet class and infinite. Torchlight Infinite. I think I'm gonna like the game more if I play a pet class. Not sure about that. Don't like the look. Yeah, I didn't like the look of any of the torchlights. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know how many they are, but... I mean, Torchlight 2 is like a good ARPG, right? That's like what people always say. But I don't know, it's... I don't like the, the style that much. Maybe we'll, like still play it at some point, just like have played it at some point. You're so mad at crates instead of building your ass, just go make room down too. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Alright, down here we have Kirion, the Tainted Soul, and he has a weapon that if you wanna play a Fire Strike melee character, it's pretty good. But even without playing Fire Strike, his weapon must have been upgraded here over our torch, but it rolled with a Frostborn prefix, so it's actually terrible. Never mind. Never mind. He would refund Grimdon to anywhere. Yeah, I just hope they they are already working like on their RTS game and that one is coming out soon and then because once that one is out, you know, which might already be a good game because RTS games are usually awesome. Then uh, they can start working on Grim Dawn 2 using the same engine. Well yet, so Microphone cutting out again? Really? Seems to be back now though, right? Oh. <clears throat> Weird. Alright, I mean, shoulders are just like insane that I have right now. Um. For pants, we can use Miss Walker's leggings, I guess. I mean, these are a pretty lucky find, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Pretty good, pretty good. Don't need any of the other crap. Every like 30 seconds or so. Must be Ellie Mighty Player's fault. Microphone cutting out. Nah, the microphone cutting out is definitely not their fault. 
the internet connection like cutting out was I feel like I mean it's definitely my ISP, but it's also like my ISP thing PC that like requires the internet to be like restarted or something like that. I don't know. Weird. Other than that, I think the multiplayer was pretty smooth. Generally. I mean they had like slight server issues I think on Saturday. And I mean, some of the things like in the game were a bit buggy here and there, but like the server stuff itself was pretty fine. Do I manually record as well? Yeah, I do. Like I do have a five hour VOD of the first day at least, because at some point I didn't have any more disk space. <laughs> I was like streaming for like 12 hours or something like that, right? It was too long. If the microphone cuts out in the water or not, it, it does usually because it's like actually the microphone. Like I can see like the audio levels of the microphone like in OBS. And if it cuts out in OBS, it's like my microphone and not like because of Twitch. So it will also cut out in the VOD, unfortunately. Which sucks for YouTube. But yeah, I mean, as I said, like I might have to like, get a new cable. Old one might be scuffed or something, I don't know. Do have a minimum limit set? Yeah, I do have that set as well. Maybe I'm like too quiet sometimes, or like the, the minimum is like... ...too high. Let's try removing that. Or like increase it, yeah. I mean, yeah, decrease it. Remove slash decrease. And yeah, maybe it won't cut out anymore now. Let's see. Or like less at least. But sometimes like actually the microphone was also like deactivating itself and just being like stupid and I'm not sure if it's because of the cable or the microphone itself or Hello? right I don't have enough jelly oh I put it in my stash what am I doing whoops 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 oh yeah season starts September 17th uh, that was from last year should probably like <laughs> change that command the next season uh, for next season we don't have a date yet oh wait uh, yeah right I, hmm. I see yeah this is the actual season command the league command uh yeah, I might just like remove that for now. Yeah, let's just remove that one. Yo, Bergy Pants, thanks for the follow 10 minutes ago. Uh, I can't actually maybe like um, activate the alerts again, right? Like, it seems like the. The follow bot, uh, the follow bots have stopped. So let's reactivate the follow alert. Actually, good. You've arrived. I'm following myself, Pog. You. Save, save, save. Should hopefully work now. Uh, I was going here for the Royal Jelly, right? Oh yeah, also I got the key, right? I got the key from, from the guy with, with whom I made the deal. Oops, where am I going? Up, down, up, down. Come on, more energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Best workout sound uh, song. You can use that key to go to a side area in the Burbage outskirts. So let's go there and check it out. The best one for streaming as well.
possibly. Okay, enemies are like lower level here, as you can see. I mean, we're not interested in this part of the map, really. We're interested in the... Whatever is behind this door here. I mean, you can like explore this area if you want. I mean, there's not really that much, honestly, there. This is like a... It's like an alpha test dungeon, to be honest. Imagine playing Force Wave Soldier and getting a Obsidian Cleaver in Depraved Sanctuary. <laughs> oh, shit. So broken. Okay, this guy can be actually like semi-challenging. I think he's an actual like dungeon boss, you know? He's the boss of this dungeon. Alright. And if you're playing a pet build, you might love his weapon as well. Because this weapon can summon a harbinger. If you have enough mana for that. There we go. Now you are now you are the dungeon boss. Honestly, these Harbingers are slow as fuck though, unless you have actual pet gear. I think they actually kinda... I mean, he does like 2k damage though right now, with this aura. I mean, it's not like weak damage wise, he's just like slow. And he dies after... He dies of cringe, I mean he dies after like a couple of uh, seconds. He dies of cringe because you're using an actual pet build, build right? Like, what the fuck are you doing? The funny thing is though, it's a of scorching suffix on this, so it's actually more damage than the torch right now. That's funny. Alright, let's craft a flint, finally. Let us finally craft a flint. Got any more scrap metal? And put this flint into the weapon, and the flint gives us an aura. This aura... where is it? Burning weapons, there it is. This aura gives ourselves and pets flat fire damage, chance to burn flat. Like, okay, this might sound weird, but it's like flat dot damage, right? Like base dot damage, you could say. And then like percent fire and percent burn damage. For a cocktail and the fireball, um, the percent fire and burn damage is more important. The flat damage is basically added to your like, total damage, like your total weapon damage pool. And Cocktail has no weapon damage, so it doesn't do anything for weapon, like for Cocktail. But it does do something for the Fireball, because Fireball has a 28% mainhand damage. Which means 28% of that damage is getting used on the Fireballs. Which is not a lot, but it's at least something. Ah, oh, that's actually also nice. We've got an Obsidian Bulwark from these, like, Chaos guys from the Depraved Sanctuary. It's not really like your typical caster item here, but it has like plus two to blast shield, some fire damage, and like more recharge, like less recharge to blast shield and so on. It's not a bad weapon. Like not a bad shield at all. You could use this for sure. Could use that. 40 flat physique and like percent health as well on top. Yeah, I mean it's like 400 more health. 
The thing is though, I think you cannot put flint core bolts in the alternate. Like you cannot put this in a shield. Gun, crossbow, and cast it off him. So you cannot put your fireballs in the shield. So if you're playing like a sword and then a shield, you cannot play fireball. Which is why you kinda don't wanna play it, I guess. But this one is actually pretty good. Of a wildfire suffix gives us like casting speed and more fire damage and zero damage. That's a nice one. That's an actual upgrade. Alright, let's go to the Broken House finally. If I had to pick one build for a player to play on. For example. Or like any of the ones that I've played. Like everything is my cutout. Ah, oh, shit. I always like watching the... Okay. It's too late. Okay, so what I said is you can you can like play any of the builds. You can play any of the builds that I posted there. Um, the second to last link, Grim Dawn SSF beginner slash starter builds, that playlist, has a ton of like builds that are like hardcore viable and like good for beginners for starters whatever is fun i mean yeah it's subjective i can tell you that like warlord or like force wave is like force wave soldiers in general or like promise strike druid or promise strike water is like very easy to play and pretty safe mm. Castle builds can also be very easy to play if you're like used to not getting hit. If you like know how to just put down stuff like cocktail and then run around in circles around enemies, dodging stuff, then this can be also like really easy to play for you if you're like used to that kind of playstyle. the game last week playing dual wield called spellbreaker nice nice sounds good how do you level with virus might early on until you get the cooldown reduction item you don't you just don't I mean, you can kinda, like with a base skill and like a two-hander. It kinda works. But... Having a blast and joining the game? Nice. That's good to hear. Level 82 hype. Wait, what are you playing? Oh wait, you're playing Inquisitor still? Are you level 82 in the Inquisitor game? Skipping Zafuzeron now. I'm just going there in a second once I get to the portal. You're playing Sork and Grimdown Hunter now. Nice. So, yeah, you wanna go to the Sips of Torment. Which means. Once you've arrived at Smuggler's Pass, at latest.
Hallo? Hallo, hallo, test, test. You would reinstall Windows? Yeah, same. I would uh, throw my PC out the window and buy a new one, right? <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. So what I was saying is that uh, if you haven't found Sepsis Torment before, right? Once you arrive at Smuggers Pass, at the very latest, you want to go back to Broken Hills and... Well, find the Steps of Torment. Because the boss there will give you the offhand that you want. So we gotta find Steps of Torment and then... Go there and kill the boss. Yep. You can also Shadow Strike skip, I guess, if you're that advanced. You can buy like another medal, put the Vanish movement skill on it, and then uh, do some so called Shadow Strike skips that I have explained, or like Illuminator and me rather have explained in a dedicated video that you can also check out on YouTube. YouTube? 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 SSF run using skips. I mean, it's technically still SSF, right? And it does speed up like the, the farming process a bit. It's not like the most intuitive thing to learn right away when you're like new to a game, but could be done. Yeah. SOT is one of the easiest, I guess. Yeah. one shrine and we're gonna kill the grand priest Zarathuzadon which is on the other side of this map over here. At 1.0 yellow mobs can assassinate you in SOT. Honestly, if you have like bad armor, this guy can, even though he looks like a fire caster, I mean, you can't really like see shit. Like, what is his fire? What is your fire? Uh, he can, he can like hurt because he has like a curse to reduce resistances and his fireballs like do deal not only fire but also physical damage. So he can be kind of scary. And he did not drop his item, which means we have to reset the session to make him spawn again. And how you do that? Well, you just go back to the main menu and re-enter the game. Like the only way to do that. These ghosts killed you on normal SLT? Really? Sounds like a skill issue, right? Haha. <laughs>
to good use. Once you have access to like corpse dust or even more importantly soul shards, you want to use soul shards on your rings to like fix your vitality resistance. Until then, it's fine to like use ectoplasms if you need more energy or like uh, polished emeralds, totally fine. Like some raw stats is not bad. It's not like amazing, but it's not bad either, totally fine. Also remember to reapply your buffs when you like reset your session. You have to always do not. They don't carry over, unfortunately. She's only saying that to make me play 1.0. She like bait me into playing 1.0, thinking it's like an actually hard game. I mean, it is harder than current iteration of Grim Dawn, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, it, I, mean, I would say it's harder than current, for sure, but maybe not like as hard as some people think it is. But it is certainly harder. Little Illuminator. Little Illuminator kid was playing Grimdon 1.0. Oh, Yeah, this is like a slightly tedious slash boring part where you have to rerun content to get the item that you want. But I mean, if you're playing RPGs, you should be like used to something like this anyway, right? Like sometimes having to refarm something to get the item you want. The drop rates aren't that bad for us. Like you won't have to like reset that many times. Maybe like 10 times at max, I think. I mean... You can just get it like on the first run as well if you're lucky, I guess. Just want to make sure to kill this guy before these like priests, the skeletal priests, uh, start healing the guy as well. Because that can get like really nasty. We got an archive. The archive is the virus might one. This is the second item you can drop. This is the wrong one. We need to reset again and well hope that he drops the right item, not this one. I'm just throwing kappa. Is that a Toma kappa or an actual kappa? We will never know, will we? Just play Virus Smite. Just play Virus Smite Sorcerer. Lol. Just play She Breaker instead. Like YouTube wanted to see like Fire Sorcerer. Just, just play She Breaker instead. Yep. Today we're gonna play a Fire Castle Sorcerer. Just kidding, we're playing Fire Smite. Just kidding.
You wanna sort videos on YouTube by date? Wait, you can. I just did that like today, actually. Or yesterday, at least. There's me right Wait, what? From news to oldest and popular. Yeah, I mean, just scroll down, right? Hold on. <laughs> just scroll down, right? Just scroll down, like, through, like, 5,000 videos. Yeah, oldest and newest uh, doesn't exist anymore, I guess. I don't know why they removed it. I have literally no idea. I mean, you, you can still, like, search the oldest video, like, just scroll down, right? But yeah, it's, it's, it's so stupid, like, removing functionality. Like, removing functionality for no reason, rather. Old videos don't make the money? That's not even true. Like... They can just put ads on the old videos as well, like, it's whatever, right? Or can they not? Maybe they can't. I mean, there probably are reasons. Not beneficial for the customer, though. Stop using the word ads, it's toxic. They want you to, like, say advertisements every single time. What? It's just short for advertisements. What are you talking about? No drop. Re all right, time to reset again. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably like was some reason, like connected to like cutting costs or I don't know, something like that. Probably cutting costs. I I kind of like failed to real like to see how like. Removing that, like, cuts cost at a, like, level where it actually matters, but okay. It's like Voldemort from Harry Potter, what? HP equals Harry Potter, by the way. I'm currently, like, rocking 3,420 Harry Potters, haha. <laughs> Oh, totem. If I run out of Harry Potter, I die. Seems like it. Are the Harry Potter movies good to watch? Uh, I mean, the, the, the first couple of ones I feel like were kind of fun as a kid, at least. I don't know, I wouldn't really like watch them anymore. I mean, they're, they're kind of like... Like, if you had like kids of yourself, maybe, you know, be kind of comfy. The new ones are very... I mean, I watched all of them at some point. The newer ones are... 
kind of like shifts from like a children's book story, like children's magic book story with like some cool events, but like cool book children events, you know, to to basically like Twilight. Also them like splitting up the last book into like two movies. It gets a little bloated at the end. Alright, I think there it is. There was the archives and there is also the codex and we were looking for the codex. We got a Demos of Rituals Codex. Um, of Rituals, I think, has some actually like elemental damage stuff, and Demos Prefix has another plus two to Canister Bomb. So, yeah, I mean, this is the item that we're looking for, and it is absolutely amazing. Pretty good water as well. Kinda lucky. Nice, nice. Come see what's left of my wares. Preserving of destruction. I mean, it's not bad, honestly. We found two swamp doors leg guards already. What the fuck? Two of the same. We didn't get the chronic shoulders by the way that I was talking about earlier. Oh well. No crown light shoulders for us. Hox died to ultimate log. Wait, what? Like, wait, wait, Pox is playing Grim Dawn? Or what, what do you mean, Log? Like Logorian? What are you talking about? From six years ago? I mean, yeah. <laughs> six years ago, maybe he died to him, yeah, sure. Makes more sense. I mean, Ultimate Logorian was hard back then. At least compared to today. Can't find the video that made you buy Grim Dawn back then. Hmm. We are level 29 with a cocktail of hand now. Let's go back to this lady here, this ghost lady. And we get another attribute point here. Let's go to Smuggler's Pass as well. And start rocking the new 
damage of this offhand. So auto chaos damage from this is fire damage now. But as it does do, it just like adds more fire and burn damage and makes the skill cost a bit less uh, energy as well. But with TLDR, it's just better. And we destroy things even better now. Yep. Cocktail in the offhand, time to get drunk. Kinda, kinda, I guess, I don't know. I mean, you, now you could play the build while being drunk, maybe. Sure. I mean... This is the Act 2 boss, I guess. He was the Act 2 boss, he's dead now. I mean, yeah, and mines are balanced copium. <laughs> hey, I invested like a lot of time trying to find this item, right? I invested like 10 minutes instead of getting it first try. Well, I have, I came up. <laughs> At least in Crown Dawn, bosses don't instantly die, like those complaining about PvE leveling. I mean, I could put on Veteran, then they would live for like two seconds longer. <laughs> I could also play Ruthless. True. Very true. Then Mervale is like one minute longer. Uh, did she actually like live for a minute when I was doing her on the... Like, Sunder Marauder? I don't think so, but... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Ruth was definitely like a lot harder than... Veteran and Grandon. Yeah, you should, you should record for sure. I mean, if you rip... I mean, you record because you rip, not because you win. Like, who records for, like, not dying? Okay. Okay. Just logged in on Twitch, but did I get the offhand? Sorry for asking. Uh, it is from Zarthuzalon. You can check out Grim Tools as well. And uh, write down the name of this guy, Zarthuzelan, right? And he spawns in the Steps of Torment, basically. He's the boss guarding the door that leads into Steps of Torment. Like, you don't have to, like, go into the actual dungeon part. No need to go there. Just kill the boss before the dungeon door. Demo, Omega Lol. I mean, Demo is. yeah. It's kind of strong. I'll say. Dude, look at this. Look at this guy's HP. Did you see that? It's like literally PoE levels of like one shotting stuff. Alright, alright. Welcome to Act 3. Or rather... Welcome mobs to getting one shot by Cocktail. Should I put on that run? I feel like... Normal should be like a bit harder in like higher acts, maybe. Sometimes. Yeah. 
put on veteran then I can leave the stream until next week. Yep. Alright, so we put a portal down here so that when we are at homestead we can, if we have dynamite, just go back to our personal portal that I left here. And now with this personal portal, but if you know the map and you have explored it before or like you have played the game before, then you know that there's like a donation site over here that you can well, explode and then like blow up. Like you think don't blow up the blockade at the demolitionist site. Demolition site. And then you get access to this like other side area here, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um it is better if you can turn the camera. If you're not a camera turner then I feel like this area is a little weird because it like goes south all the time. Um at least until the the rift gate runs. I mean, going south, I mean, you do that a lot in RPGs, actually. Um, generally, you go more north than south, of course. But in this game, at least you can turn the camera as well. And then, like, going south doesn't feel quite as bad. I guess there's one game where you always go to the east, though, but other than that, uh, you always go north, pretty much. At least in the maps, usually. Super Mario, you always go east. I guess so too. Some people just like get dizzy, I don't know. I can understand like people getting dizzy from like the camera rotation and Inquisitor Martyr, honestly, because it's like very it doesn't feel that smooth to the eye. But like this one in Grand Dawn, like it's, it's... No, it feels so good. At least to me. can't ever use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I can understand that like you might getting, might be getting lost or your OCD gets might be triggered, but no, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I should start putting points in Arcanas now. Like the demo side is pretty much done. We are officially a sorcerer now. A Arcanist Demolitionist makes a sorcerer in this game. You get lost without turning the camera. Makes a beginner SSF guide but rotates the camera. Beginner equals the beginner is in despair. I mean... Sometimes I try to like not turn the camera but it's... It's so hard to restrain myself. I feel like sometimes I'm like actually addicted to like turning the camera. Like I just have to, like... Like sometimes like if I'm walking a path, right? And it's like curved, I like... Do like this, right? Like it's like curved to the left, curved to the right. I like... I click the camera button like five times a second just to like adjust it like to like the minimal angles so that like the road in front of me is always straight. It's maybe like a different kind of OCD, I don't know. What how to keep my camera turn? Um like the mouse wheel, like you just press the mouse wheel down to activate it and then you move the mouse to, to rotate. Also, yeah, like on a first time playthrough, you might get lost a lot if you turn the camera too much. So you might want to like remember the depot layout first, like by never rotating, and then like once you know the maps, 
it's easier for you to rotate. I'd like to use rotation. You always adjust so that you go like left, top, or right. Or optimal Shadow Strike range. Yeah, if you're playing a Shadow Strike character, then, or like a Blitz character, that's what you want to do, yeah. True. Like, optimize the zoom. Bound to mouse wheel without clicking first. Wait, did I disable all the alerts completely now? Yo, Gados, thanks for the Prime. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you so much for the support. I was disabling alerts earlier because of was getting uh, follow botted. Uh, I didn't think I disabled. Sub emotes, uh, like sub alerts though, I don't know why it's not working. I mean, either way, I very much appreciate the support and welcome into the bloomers. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Oh, instead of like zooming in and out on your mouse wheel, you scroll like left and right then. And that would be also interesting actually. And overcautious gamer as well, the Prime. Thank you so much for 31 months, and I apologize for not having any any alerts right now for some reason. Let me double check if it's activated or not. I mean, it should be. I don't know what's not working. Ah, I've been expecting you, human. This is a test. Uh, that's weird. Should be working. I don't know why it's not working. Maybe maybe next stream. Maybe next year. We will see. Weird. Good, 31 months? What the hell, man? Time flies. Thirty-one years. Alright, we're gonna get another shrine over here. Like, the main reason why you wanna go to this area, like around Pine Barrens, is because this area has two devotion shrines. Um, additionally to like two side quests for the like Black Legion. Hmm. You kind of always also should have dynamite with you to like open up these like treasure troves because they have a pretty high chance to also drop like blueprints. And you do want blueprints as many as you can have, as many as, as, as you can get, especially on your first playthrough. Now, usually you might think at this point in the game you can only like farm dynamite like in those uh, in those mine caves, right? Like in the mines from Act 2. However, there is honestly a better and more efficient way to do that. Which is just like to craft dynamite um, with aether crystals or like aether shards. The thing is though that the first smith in Devil's Crossing cannot craft that. Um, but all consecutive smiths can. Like the one in Forgotten Gods can, the one in Homestead can. So let's visit the one here in Homestead. What the fuck? Let's get some lore as well. Alright, over here. 
Baldric, the Legion Smith. Alright. So go for Dynamite. So Dynamite needs a Aether Shard. Aether Shard needs three crystals and one Aether Shard again will be transformed into three Dynamite. So basically every single Aether Crystal is a Dynamite. And that is way, way more efficient than farming Dynamite because you can just like farm Aether Crystals super easily, for example, in Warden's Lab, right? You will drop so many crystals there compared to like how much dynamite you get in the mines. So yeah, please don't like farm dynamite. Just farm Aether Crystals and then like craft dynamite. Don't listen to Reddit. Or like, I don't know. Unless? No, there's no unless. Just farm Aether Crystals in, in Warden's Lab. There is no unless. There is no unless. Just... There is only one best thing. <laughs> farm Ice Crystals to farm Aether Crystals to farm Dynamite. I mean, in the seasons, that might be actually more efficient, yeah. It still requires you to, like, enter a certain dungeon, though, but other than that... Wait, I just lost the blueprint. I mean, if you have like a certain side quest that you want to do anyway, then of course, like pick up the dynamite that, that like lies around there, right? Like for example, here in Tyrant's Hold, at the end here, there's like one single dynamite, and I mean, of course, you're gonna pick it up as well, right? So, whenever you're like doing something else on top, then of course you would like to like pick up all the Aether Crosses and like dynamite as well on the run. But if you're like only doing dynamite on its own and nothing else, then. Yeah, Aether Crystals is the best way to get it. In 1.0, it's better to pick up Dynamite in the mine than crafting. Hey, what? Did they ever, like, change the recipe for that? I don't think so, did they? Wait, is it, like, more expensive to make Aether Shards in 1.0? Is it fun to play Retaliation build? I mean, fun is very subjective. If you like the concept of, like, a Retaliation build, then that's probably fun for you. Mats the same, but components are more rare. What? That doesn't have to do anything with Aether Crystals or Dynamite. Like, there's no partial Aether Crystals in 1.0. Like, what are you talking about? Wait, do you need, like, components to craft Dynamite? Do you need, like, Searing Ember or what? Oh, maybe it's because of the Searing Ember? I mean, Searing Ember is even, like, even 1.0, it's, like, very, very easy to get, right? Like, come on. Are these guys like super fire resistant or what's going on here? Hello? Hello? Taking no down. Oh shit, they're healing. Healing, healing. I mean, okay, they're they're from the Ember Clan. So Ember Clan like obviously has like more fire resistance. That makes sense. Alright, at least the boss isn't. He dropped dynamite, by the way. Is it, like, efficient to farm this guy? No, it's not. Right, let's go to Pine Barons here. And hand in the quests. Play Spam Ages Answer Return Season 4. Very much fun, yeah. Yeah, I think, like, Sentinel is probably, like, the most uh, straightforward slash fun slash beginner friendly retaliation build you can do. There are others that you can also do. Some of them are like a little bit slower to get going, in my opinion. Um, Alright, another passive, another aura. 
from the Scandos Element Exchange and a passive, like a, just a passive from Inner Focus. Resolute of Balanced Steel. Peer stress, Eddie Russ, I lose Aether Russ there. Hmm. Honestly, on normal difficulty like Aether Russ and Curse Russ, it's, it's still important, but not like that important yet, to be honest. Fanatics Overcoat. Hmm. Okay, what about. Ungoliaxus amulet got here. This one converts devastation. I mean, devastation is a skill that we're not going to use like for ever here. Uh, the problem is that this one converts fire damage to vitality globally, everything, including your cocktail. So you cannot play this pretty much. Such. See ya. Literally unplayable. Oh, emulation. Yeah, emulation is like okay, I guess. Sure. I would say it's still worse than Warden's Lab, but that's okay. Alright, let's put a Mark of the Traveler in the boots to get more movement speed this time around. Devotions, we're gonna finish the Solar's Witchblade, uh, put the cocktail on this, and now we wanna work our way towards the Magi. The Magi also needs more green, so for more green we need to pick up something like Hawk or like uh, Scuttle's Light maybe at this point. Let's do that. Let's go and fetch Agram. So good. If you're farming mats in multiplayer, like actually farming, like Trying to efficiently farm any like any mats in multiplayer. Uh, it's kinda trolling, yeah. I have to agree here with Illuminator because You're getting only like one sure drop per party be. and not one drop per character. Like you're getting less mats in multiplayer than a single player. The Legion is split on two I see you've returned the Legion is split. I see you you are joking. You're joking, you. right? The Legion is split. Oh my god, I'm too stupid to like click on things here. I mean... Emulation doesn't become more efficient with playing multiplayer though. Like, it has nothing to do with like multiplayer or not. Like you're still like losing mounts, and it doesn't matter where you farm right. Unlike LE, where you get four times as much loot in MP, yeah. <laughs> I mean, LE, yeah, is uh, very generous when it comes to multiplayer loot, at least for now. Not sure if they're gonna change that, but for now it's very, very generous in, in MP. Alright, good luck Naomi. Time to pot up. Yo, easy work, man. Cocktail Giga Chan. <laughs> Just play cocktail, lol. Alright, alright, alright. Devotion, finish this. Go for Mandra next. To Aether Clusters. I mean, don't don't use one in phase one, and you're fine, right? You guys are such Reddit bullies. You guys are bullies. <laughs> you guys are bullies.
I'm running a battle mage. My main skills are Warcry and all of that. It's not much of rotation, but I wasn't sure what else to call it. Anyway, Warcry damages enemies for percent HP. <laughs> Should I be popping Warcry before or after to maximize damage? Or does it not make a difference? Uh, and then, like I was saying, like if you're playing Warcry and all of that for damage, like you're basically trolling. Like I, I didn't say it like that, but I said like you might want to reconsider your main skill because like both of them are useless against bosses. And then he was like, oh wait, no, I mean they're not my main skills, right? Like my main skills is like something else. Those are just like my my like other skills, like my main non-main skills, something like that. Instead of making fun and answer the question. <laughs> I mean, I did, actually, in the Reddit thread. In trying to be helpful, you just like copy puzzles too. I mean, yeah, yeah, you are, actually. Illuminated also tries it sometimes to be helpful on Reddit, I feel like, but... I feel like he does it in a, like, sometimes slightly offensive way, because he's just, like, annoyed by, like, some people's... Inability of like figuring out like the easiest things ever in life or like in games So his answers are either like semi-helpful semi-toxic or like Semi just toxic <laughs> And uh, but, like he's, he's like trying to troll like sometimes it's just like obvious trolling and like uh, But Grimdon Reddit doesn't like trolling either so it just gets like downvoted all the time. Illuminate is just basically like farming downvotes on Reddit. On Grim Dawn Reddit, I feel like sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I said that when you were in the ad, like sometimes you actually like, give help for stuff. But sometimes you're just like, like trolling and then like people... I don't know, like Grindon Reddit doesn't understand when you're trolling when you're not, they just don't. I guess Reddit in general like sometimes just doesn't understand, but... The Grindon Reddit like especially doesn't understand and also... I feel like most of the people there also... For some reason like don't like... Um, I also don't like the poison here by the way, like this poison from the shrine like it always is here around, like, around the shrine when you kill stuff. Can deal a lot, lot of damage, so please be careful. Thanks so much for the resub. Easy mode. I'll just play this test instead because uh, ah, loads are fucked today. I've been expecting you. you. This is a test. <laughs> yeah. I had to disable alerts earlier today because I got pulled over, botted, and for some reason, even though I didn't touch subs at all. Subs also are fucked right now, I don't know why. I mean, unless you like put a slash S, like people on the internet, or like it's just actually like, kind of hard in general to like understand sometimes like if people are being serious or not to be honest. Like in Reddit, like I feel like slash S is like mandatory to point out sarcasm, otherwise like people will just not understand. Your OBS is zoomed in. Oh, it's because you had a smaller screen earlier when you like last like the last time you recorded, and now it's bigger. I mean, you have to uh, just like make your game smaller. I don't know. Like, go into the scene, go into the source, and like double-click the source and like make the screen of the source smaller that like is capturing the game. Because it's probably zoomed in because you probably had like a smaller uh, screen earlier. I played pets and I died at level 56, what to do? It seems like a... like a... You got to level 56, wait what? <laughs> Have your rest. <laughs> not the try, try to not get hit. Yeah, cap your res, ignore armor. Pretend ignore armor doesn't exist. Cap your res, pretend absorption doesn't exist. Just cap your res, dude.
Just overcap rest. Don't get armor. <laughs> Absorb doesn't exist though, yeah, exactly. You found one toxic comment. By who? By whom? By you? Ah, you're never toxic. I mean, there, there's more than just that one, I think. But yeah, that one was toxic as fuck. <laughs> yeah, after the time you can just ride use components and it's actually helpful, yeah. I mean, what did I say? When you're like above level 18 or like above level 20 in Grand Dawn, not using components is like being 18 and still pooping your pants, right? Like just use components, right? Like just don't poop your pants, right? Time for demo Birdcraft. I need to sign what the comments chosen first. I cannot craft a demo belt before that. It's level 35 anyway. Right? I still have like two levels to go. But yeah, I will need to side with comments chosen and then I will need to get the required reputation to buy the blueprint to uh, craft the belt. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's the clip. Right. Grim Dawn and components, right? Here we go. Me trying to look at like a some kind of build that, but like, not using components at level ninety three is like, I don't know what what can you compare that to. I, I don't want to like trash talk anybody here. Like I'm I'm, I'm gonna stop. But... Dude, I'm so toxic. Like I'm not. I don't want to trash talk anybody. I say it's like being eighteen and like still shitting in your pants, like in real life. Not not in game, by the way, in real life. <laughs> <Toxic as fuck. laughs> I'm sorry, but the guy was like literally not using components at level 93, dude. Come on. What can I say? He wasn't like level 30 or 40 or 50, he was level 93, dude. Shit him a tapper? I mean, yeah, literally. Shit him metaphor? Wait, how do you say it in English? Metaphor? 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 Yes. Toxic streamer calls innocent viewer toxic. Hey no. Met metaphor. Metaphor. What's the meta for that? It's pronounced cropping rotlands, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cropping rotlands. Let's go. Okay, so we killed the queen, we killed the amalgamation. There's a couple of other like side quests you can do in this area actually, if you like explore it properly. If you're a first time player, like please explore your whole map. There are some other secrets here that you can check out. Um, I'm not gonna bother though here, but yeah, please do. Please do, please do. Also one thing, right, if you have a semi like decently decked out gear set already and you wanna, for example, get more um, vitality or chaos runs, right? Like, moving on here in Act 3, we're gonna encounter more chaos damaging enemies. So what you can do is you can just like sell your stuff over here and then like write, for example, chaos resistance in the buyback menu because, well, this one doesn't have any search bar, but this one does. And then you realize at this point that there is nothing for you because yeah as you can see hmm. well that's gonna sucks 
What you can do though, at least for vitality resistance, is you can use soul shards and corpse dust in your rings. And we're also gonna use a Golos ring, right? The Golos ring that you got from from Golos, from Golom. We got his precious, his precious ring, and we can use that one at level thirty-five for sure. And before that, though, I'm still using a level five helmet. This Golos ring is an ethical warning of attack. <laughs> what do you mean? It only has like extra Aether rest and like OA. What do you mean? I mean, just 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 be lucky. I don't know, like a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. There was much. I see you, my Just a tiny little bit. It's not like that rare though. Like, come on, it's like double magic. Not even like a rare affix. Alright, we sign with Brotherman Bill. And we go back to Devil's Crossing and uh, switch out the component on one of the rings at least. Right. Uh, put a soul shard here for like another 20% vitality resistance. That is pretty nice, pretty nice. Now what? Put one here, put one here, put one here. And go back to the homestead, right? Go back to homestead. Let's go. It's not the shield of the sea for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it must be because of cheat engine, right? Haha. Unethical streamer, unethical playthrough. That's what they say. That's what they say. Don't listen to the haters. You're failing at bullying crab turtle? It's okay, I I still like pronounce it wrong as you intended it to be, right? Okay, so if you're siding with Kaimit's Chosen, you can either just like go to their base, which is like over here, up here, and talk to them and like listen to all the lore, listen to all their like propaganda. Or you can just do what they want you to do anyway, um, if you know. I mean, you probably don't know though if you're watching this, so I'm gonna tell you that there is a guy called Bolvar in this map, and you just kill him. And then there are like cultists dropping Cathonian Seas of Binding, and you need to find three of them. And that's pretty much all they want you to do. I hope this video series will explain why notification sucks. Well, if notifications, if you think notification sucks, or if you want to know why notification sucks, I recommend this guy called Professor Rife on YouTube. I'm pretty sure he will tell you why it sucks exactly. The guy is called Bolvar Fordragon. Fordragon. Right. What? Wait, what? That's from a different game, isn't it? And we are the toxic ones, Lava. <laughs> hey, come on. I'm just I'm just saying where you can find information, right? I'm just like telling people where they can find precious information. Helping a friendly content creator out, you know? Nice cocktail, holy shit. Okay, she's, she's not porting there, alright.
What's the last clip? Kurt Plunk on feelings. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like whenever I'm trying to be toxic, like Kurt Plunk is just more of that. Yeah, this guy must be like really bad at the game if he like can't hit his cocktail, right? He must be really bad at like explaining stuff in the game as well. Alright, so we're still searching for uh, stuff, right? Um, what you can also do is like you can leave a portal somewhere in this like thicket of the blood grove and try to get to... Try to not get lost around there. What am I doing? Holy fuck. I'm actually getting lost here. And just go for like the next portal here, right? Like the next waypoint. And then go back to your personal portal. Go back to, to the blood grove. Did I explain why the evolutionist needs three attributes yet? No. I said just pump physique, maybe get some spirit, and only get cunning on this character if you needed to require like to wear gear and I mean okay maybe if you want like want more away, but usually you don't actually. Just want to get away from like gear and skills. Alright, we found we found Bolivar the Bloodbinder. Not Bolivar Full Dragon. And killed him. That is good. That is one side quest for the comments chosen done. Who's best, Professor Wife or Maya? I mean, Maya like actually knows how the game works at least. Now, Maya like actually works, at least knows how pet works, like how pets work, right? And she does like some decent uh, pet guys actually. Like she might optimize for laziness over like performance sometimes, but other than that, like she actually knows how the game works, you know. There's also a shrine here. You want to save the farmers, right? Kekona. You want to click all the totems that you see, because click totem, I mean see totem, click totem, right? You just put on a cocktail and the entire totem explodes anyway, because we have the right setup for it. Um, if you, you don't need Vitality and Chaos Rust if the enemy is dead before it hits you, right? Seems good. You need five Black Legion Insignias. Still like one more to go. And yeah, we have found the farms already, we killed Bolvar. We have gotten the shrine, there's pretty much nothing left to do here. So we can just like port back to the, uh, to the next waypoint now. There is a third quest for Comets Chosen that you can do here in advance as well. In advance as well. And that is the one from the Fort Heron, right? You see the Fort Heron only like here on the map. Um, in game though, like in the actual in game map here, I mean, that's also in the game, this map, but uh, you know what I mean. Uh, you would have to go like northeast and then like to like northwest to get to Fort Heron. Like, like this, basically, right? North northeast to northwest. And here is the Fort Heron. And depending on, like, which faction you sign with, you will have either the Comet's Chosen enemies here, or enemies from the Death's Vigil here. And uh, if you're side with Comet's Chosen, you just have to go in here and assassinate their leader, basically. Or just kill like, every everyone in the, in the way as well. However you want to proceed with this quest. <clears throat> I love uh, Professor Riot's videos when he was playing season 4 especially, like... That was pretty fun.
Alright, here you want to go like southwest to get to the Gryer's Mill. Otherwise, if you go like this and then up here, you will miss this part, right? Ah, not totem, right? Pick the totem. Burn the totem, burn the heretics. Burn the demons. We're out of 35, so... We have the level to craft and equip the Kaiman's Chosen Belt, however, we don't have the blueprint yet. So I didn't hand in like any of their quests. The amount of points you want to put in Victor Flame kind of like depends on your movement speed, right? Like once you hit 135%, as I just did, you don't want to put more points there. You want to always max out the Flame Touch though, and you want to also always like put a point down here into the Mastery Bar. And you don't want to put more than one point in these yet, though. Is there any main quest where you have to talk to an NPC before doing the quest objective for the quest to work? Uh, I'm just thinking. I mean, last epoch, like all of them. <laughs> in this game. Not sure, actually. <laughs> Yo, Susie, welcome on. Good evening, Rekt. Have been looking and listening as playing. However, you may want to check your chat. Looks like it has been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's just people spamming, Susie. It's just people spamming. It's just people spamming so far. Like spamming copy pasta. It's like a it's like a Twitch phenomena. And I'm not sure if it was intended, but it, like you writing what you wrote actually kind of like fits fits in there as well. Like, like trying to be helpful here, which I do appreciate, um, is it's almost like you're like part of the trolling, you know? <laughs> like people are gonna like copy and paste what you wrote there. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, welcome to Twitch. Like, welcome to, to, to Twitch uh, brain, I guess. I don't know. To, like, Twitch's collective hive mind. But yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, this is good. This is, this is actually pretty funny now. <laughs> I don't think, like, any of these people are... I mean, none of these people are actually bots. They're all, like, just humans. And I didn't get hacked here. But yeah, it's pretty hilarious. We'll get back to my plank. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Holy shit, chat. <laughs> okay, this is actually hilarious. <clears throat> I very much appreciate it though. Thanks for thanks for watching, thanks for for lurking and thanks for Thank you, thank you bots for participating in my chat, right? Mr. Destructoid reporting in. Alright, over here another shrine, and over here you have Zarya. There is legends of people dying to the swan because of her curse. Reducing your vitality and chaos resistance to negative numbers and this mob spawning chaos crystals that like literally got one shot instantly the second she spawned them because of cocktail having good AOE Yeah, if you just kill her crystals like instantly You won't even notice that she can kill you But if you don't kill her crystals and you have your chaos rust like dropped to low numbers the crystals will eventually start shooting and just one shot you Yeah, but if you just kill the crystals because she spawned them in your AoE, for example, then you won't even notice that this enemy can actually like be of any danger and potentially kill you. See anything you like. <laughs> Very nice blending there. Oh my god, shed is on fire.
chat is literally on fire. All right, we got a flesh warped plate mail here. Actually has chaos rust. It's not bad, not bad. Pretty bad chaos rust. No, I mean poison rust now though. Oh, this one is poisonous. Like a lot of that. I mean, okay, we're gonna play this thing, right, instead of that. <laughs> what is that? Pasta now. Hello, Rector Protoss, what is your favorite food? Haha, I'm just a human striking a normal conversation. Are you enjoying the game Grim Dawn, Mr. Rector Protoss? That sounds like a bot message. Holy fuck, dude. If I haven't seen one. Are you a bot too? Dude, I just can't stop smiling. This was so hilarious. Oh, we can also use Fnatic's overcode, actually. As more chaos resistance. Uh, I mean, the rest about it kind of sucks, though. Vigorous of the Void. Eh, it's lots of health. But this is not part of Exile. Or Last Epoch. Like, stacking hybrid health is not quite as good in this game as it is in Ellie or like in PoE. Also, it's conversion, yeah. So, I mean, I was not gonna use it anyway, but. Because of conversion, it's like actually terrible anyway. <clears throat> My streamer, yeah, 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 yeah. My streamer is not retarded, copium. My streamer is never retarded. There's enough Ellie for two months. <clears throat> there's, there's more uh, Ellie events, by the way, before the actual release of multiplayer. May the light of MP. They don't sleep well. Wait, I don't have three seals. Only have two. Oh my god! The light of Imperium doesn't shine on me yet. This is what I want to buy, right? This one right here. Chosen Core plus one to Demo. But I'm at two out of three for the Seals of Binding. And I'm at... Well... I need like basically double the amount of reputation still. Feels bad, man. But yeah, I, I slept okay. I mean, I slept good enough, I would say. Should we do Act 4 as well? Let's do Act 4 as well. I am t I could win the Legion was forced to abandon. Act 4 is kind of quick to be honest compared to Act 3. It should be easy and quick. Wait, no, I haven't killed Karos yet even. What am I talking about? It's not even Act 4 yet. I'm lying, chat. Get the Twitch police. Lying on the internet? What?
need a carrot emote for Karos. True. Wrecked by carrot. Wrecked by Karos. Just have it be like a like a carrot. Or like a pepper, like holding instead of a cocktail, like a carrot. Wrecked, am I done with LA? Dude. Oh my god. Like every time you stop like streaming something for like one day, it's like, are you done with this game? Will you never play it ever again? Take a look, shall we? I love Twitch chat. Okay, so the reason why I'm not playing Ellie today is because the multiplayer invitation event has literally ended. Like, I cannot play it today. I mean, I could play like the old patch from like last year March, but I cannot play the new patch today. Because the event has ended. I'm not allowed to play it anymore. Like, I would literally not be able to log in. No more login. So, am I done with LA? I mean, the next event is on Thursday, right? So I might log in on Thursday again. We'll see, we'll see. I noticed that you have not been streaming LA in one day. Can you tell us why you hate the game that much? For all time? Yeah. Yeah, it's such a bad game, dude. Like, you can never play it. Like, what the fuck? Why would, you, why would you even play it for like more than one day? SMH my head. What can I say? I quit forever. And then tomorrow I'm gonna play it again. I quit forever until Thursday, yeah. Pretty much. I basically quit forever until Thursday, yep. Yep, yep, that's the correct wording. Should do like, a, like, an, like a reaction video on YouTube, like, I quit, I leave forever and I... Never regret. Uh, I don't regret my decision, right? I hate every second, uh, single second of like playing it in the past, and so I finally quit, and no more regrets. Did how fly, How high did those guys fly? What the fuck? Like the ragdoll is sometimes a little, a little, a little bit too much, maybe. <clears throat> Algorithms love these, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's also like people just clicking on them, right? That's why the algorithm love them. Like love those kind of titles. <clears throat> With my face being all sad, like yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> you know, like just troll like YouTube. I, I kinda would like to actually do that maybe. I don't know. And then just like, you know, have like the title, everything, like and then like opening bracket, meme. Closing bracket, right? And then, like, see how many people, like, actually understand that it's a meme. Like, I'm gonna get, like, downvoted as hell, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, exactly. I quit Ellie forever, here's why. And then, in brackets, like, meme or story time. I mean,. Might be fun. Huh? You hate those clickbait titles? I mean, yeah, who doesn't? And yet it works. Or rather, yet they work. Oh, could have had like 80% of it before this fight. Uh, this was like three boss, by the way, like act boss. Like, he's a very engaging fight, right? If you just put on the cocktail and watch him burn to death. Yeah, he's, he's very, very hard, very hard boss. Very hard indeed. Do it for science and money.
I don't know, man. Okay, I think elite content at least is not as bad on my YouTube as like PUE content. Like literally every time I post like something about PUE, or like make some like post some VOD about like me playing PUE, I always lose subscribers. Like literally every single time. <laughs> literally every single time, dude. Ellie is like okay on my channel, I think. Ellie did, did okay. Where can I upload your video? Does Imgur work? Pretty sure like Imgur is only for images. That's why you do different channels. It's funny, like like even Gothic, like even the Gothic VOD, right? Brought me like viewers, you know, like subscribers. Like even Gothic won, like <laughs> Like literally anything works about Shadow except for PoE, I feel like. I mean maybe not like I guess like even like a fucking Animal Crossing would work, you know? But just not PUE. It's kind of funny. My brand is a PUE hater sanctuary. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm not the problem. Maybe PUE is the problem. But PUE works for other people, right? At least for the established like PUE content creators, I guess. I don't know. Maybe PUE is just a shit game, right? Shit game. Match. Why are you playing this game, Mr. Streamer? Yeah, that's the thing, like, they don't want to see, like, some noob, like, struggle and act, like, in the 10 acts for, like, 5, or, like, rather, 10 hours. Path of mouth might sub to you if I should talk Chris. Uh... Where can you upload a video with 1.8 gigabyte of size? I mean, there's a website called, um, YouTube. You know that one? That one's pretty good for videos I've heard. I have to do content that I enjoy doing. I mean, I enjoyed like playing the character. I mean, I, I, did, I didn't upload the Ice Crash guy. I uploaded the Concoction guy. I mean, Ice Crash was kind of meme and pain, but... You cannot deny the content quality of this. Okay. So, here we are. Far away from your friend Diego. I'm to send you regards from Bloodwin. Oh my god. Don't He's try that up. again. Of course. Wait, they're stealing away my... The oh my hero. god. Thanks for the ore, you hero. <laughs> It's just leveling, there's thousands of those videos. These fuckers, dude. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> what is Matt doing? I thought he was maybe like gonna help me at least. He's fucking useless as well. This is real fun. Thanks for taking me with you. We could do that more often. There's loads of more time left today. The nerve of this guy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you send the video on Discord? You, you cannot send a 1.8 gigabyte large video file on Discord, no. Just upload it to YouTube. This one was good too. If you don't have a YouTube account, I mean, just make one. <laughs> what was this? Chosen by... Mm. <sighs> The sleeper has chosen you. I mean...
If you send it to me, he might crash my internet. Uh, she might, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <clears throat> Just stream the video on Twitch, lol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, C totem, click totem. Oh, also we have Ragarathar Rage Blood here. I mean, just kill him, right? Use your skills and kill him. Um, yep. That was a totem, yep. MIs aren't OP or the game, Copium. They are definitely balanced, yep. To quote Zantai, MIs? MIs giving like flat damage early is usually not a problem. But in the case of Blitz, we might actually like have to take another look at that and nerf it. Yeah, it's only a problem for Blitz, of course. Not for any of the other items, or like skills, or, or skill modifiers. Honestly, I think I wanna play this. Like, no meme. Sure, I'm gonna lose some armor, but whatever. And maybe even just as well. Like, okay, this is Thunderstruck of Kings. I know, I know, I know, it's good, but... This is also nice. Yeah, Red Fire Elf, Pokemon, Pokemon. Lurkin not burning. Welcome to the lurkers. Uh, Cartosian invoke is actually not too bad either. It's better than this. I do need to extract the flint though, of course. Unyielding of fortitude. I mean, that was pretty good rest as well. I would literally have zero chaos rest. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but as far as I know, the act boss of act 4 is a chaos enemy. I might want to get some chaos rest. Like, for example, on these gloves. That's nice. Now, if, I, if I'm like actually being sometimes like unclear when it comes to like some mechanics or anything about the game, like feel free to ask like anything, you know? Like as much as I sometimes like... Like the people who I like to make fun of are the people thinking they know stuff about a game, like it doesn't matter which game, and just like give fault, like wrong advice. Uh, if it's like actually good advice, then it's of course like good, right? And if you're like genuinely like unaware of like something and you want to know, I mean feel free to ask, right? I will answer your question, like... Uh, in a totally like normal but like manner. Like as rare as the people are, but there are people also that have like started following me like when I was playing another game. Um, like, I don't know. Nazi Pork or Paths Frontier or Path of Exile, right? Maybe even Path of Exile, I don't know. So there might be like some people that actually are completely new to this game, even though they have been following for a longer period of time. So yeah. Please, no bullies, chat. Uh... So yeah, I wanna look for... Resistances, mostly. Oh, this hammer is also insane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course we play this, right? What is this? 6% away in DA to IE. <clears throat> and you cannot, like, not play this. The physical damage that we get off this is useless, but, I mean, still amazing. You mentioned Grindon is my main game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Fuck PUE, am I doing it right? I wanna fit in. Uh. You don't have to say that to like fit in, dude, come on. I mean, it helps, but... <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking.
Oh, these are nice. Run and get off the wolf. Wait, did I did I sell my other? Yeah, thanks for the follow. HS and Rod. Alerts are Pepega today. They're not working. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, but also don't know why. I mean, they're not working. That's that's for sure. Also, FPZ, welcome in. I don't know if you're still here. Following 40 minutes ago. Welcome in, welcome in. All oh, right, you came over from Titan Quest, right, Fire Elf? Right, you were you were like a Titan Quest enjoyer. True, 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 true. I mean, just think of Grim Dawn as like Titan Quest 2.0, and then you're gonna love this game. Okay, resistances looking decent. I mean, my chaos rest still kind of sucks, but what can I do? The thing that I could do though is actually, I could try to get the like some of the components. Once you are respected with someone, like with a faction, you can buy their blueprints, right? Currently, that is only the case for rovers and devil's crossing so let's check out devil's crossing here devil's crossing quartermaster can sell us the blade swarm talisman which is a relic that allows you to dual wield the gunslinger's talisman that allows you to dual wield ranged weapons devil's cord for a plus one soldier belt the aether soul to like get more aether resistance let's buy that the gluttony relic might as well buy it silver core bolts um for like piercing bolts focusing prism might as well buy it and the rotten heart might as well buy it just like blueprints, none of these do we really need or want to use right now though, but still like nice to have them for like a like an account progression. Uh, is there a salvage operation? Um, yeah, yeah, like I was taking out components. It's like kind of like charms in Titan Quest, right? You can like take out charms, like components that are caught in this game and put them in other gear. You can put components in epics and legendaries in this game though, which you cannot in in Titan Quest, right? Okay, Restless Remains, Runestone, Wraith, Scepter, Monk of Mokjowen. I believe the... What's it called? <clears throat> the thing I'm searching for is the Sanctified Bone, and I believe that one is... From Kaiman's Chosen slash the Vigil, right? Or maybe it was Black Legion as well. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I have a couple of quests to hand in here anyway, so we're going here for that. See anything you like? We're still not friendly enough with these guys. Okay, they have the black tallow, but they don't have the uh, the other thing. I guess I would have to recover their ashes as well from the Imperian guy. To have them like me enough. Okay, we also have the mirror. The mirror of Iraq tastes like a panic button, right? You just press it and they're like immune for three seconds. I um, mean, one of the most OP skills in the game. Yeah. Uh, does Necro have any options for cast a build that's not Ravenous Earth? Because you dislike his other skill, you like Siphon Souls, but you don't know. That can be a central skill. Siphon Souls itself, rather rarely. Unless you're playing like Valgur Caster, I guess. But Valgur Caster also has like other skills that it uses on top. Um, like not only, not only Siphon Souls, 
There are also like some bone harvest builds, I guess. But they're mostly like rather a bit more like weapon damage heavy than like caster heavy. Um, but yeah, I would look into like a ritualist or cabalist. Spellbinder is also good. Um, of course, like a very, very good aether caster that can be played without Ravenous Earth. Mm, I wouldn't say it's like Siphon Souls heavy, but yeah, it can be played without Ravenous Earth at least. You can like play Illumin instead for damage reduction, for example. It's like a Illumin plus Devastation caster most of the time, and you can like add Siphon Souls if you, if you want on top, right? The Rain Essence build using Siphon Souls. I mean, again, then it's like not really like a Siphon Souls build, but it's more like a Rain Essence build. But I mean, that's fine. I mean, Siphon Souls is largely like a AoE clearing slash debuff ability. Like giving you like additional leech and like packs of enemies. It's never really like good for a single target, and I don't think it will ever be, to be honest. Like, it's just mechanically not fit to be like a good single target skill. At least not on, not, not on its own. But it's totally fine for like builds to have like one AoE skill and like one single target skill as well. That is totally fine. Alright, speaking of devotions, we should put more points here to finally get towards the fissure. <clears throat> Alright, here you also want to like leave a portal if you have this quest, slay the necromancer's garden in the ashes. Because you want to go back here and then like through, through that down to the tomb of the Archon. Uh, because the necromancers are over there. Wait, I didn't hand in Karas' tome. What am I doing? Oops. Oops. You should obviously do that before heading to Fort Icon because... I mean, it doesn't really matter, but... Just for like story and lore progression, you should do that. Just so, like, so you, so you know why you are here. Yeah, but now we have the portal there, so we gotta go down and retrieve the necromancer's ashes. Do you remember the pet dervish with four guardians and five blood spirits? Yeah. How was that? I mean, I would say it's maybe like a B tier build or something like that, like A or B. Certainly not S. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't like... Not like a meta build as strong, but it was like certainly playable and, and fun. And I mean, it's a pet build in a way, right? Like you, could, you could always just like run around in circles and like let your pets do their thing. To like min-max the doubt, you would actually have to like face tank on that build. Um, or like cast your fireballs as well on top. What's like a meta build? Uh, I mean like a fire cast of sorcerer can be like a meta build basically, or like a... I mean... The thing with primary strike builds is like they are really really amazingly strong for like leveling and like early end game as well. But like for actual endgame, I feel like Promise Strike builds are also like B tier builds. Like if you want to like properly min maximum with gear and so on. They're more like B or maybe A, but never like S actually. Sugoi builds. S tier builds are Sugoi.
with promise strike, uh, with promise strike rituals that is unbelievably squishy. Don't even know what to do with it. I mean, you should play it in the league and like play it with a ranged weapon and like play the ranged version. Then you don't. Then it doesn't matter as much that it's squishy because you can just kite them. Subarashi bullets. I mean, yeah, Subarashi is pretty good as well. Sugoi Subarashi. Uh, what else was there? Sticky. Right, stake builds. I mean, what? Stecky, stecky na buildo. Sugoi. Yeah, with, a, with a U, yeah. Sugoi. Like this. <clears throat> Arigato. Arigatou gozaimasu. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do itashimashite. Are? What is wrong here? Everything is blocked. Moshi, moshi. Any cuties in chat? Requesting backup. Ah, yeah, yeah. Alright, another shrine down here. If you click on the torch and like find a hidden area at this hidden tomb. Another shrine awaits for you. Another shrine awaits you. Gogeta. Godzilla, Godzilla. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> what was I gonna say? Yeah, S tier builds, right? Sugoi builds. What are Sugoi builds? Um, I don't know. Ludigan Druid. Pet Conjurer. Uh, Vitality Cast the Ritualist. Uh, Blitz Warlord, I guess. Or like. Force Wave Battle Mage. Avenger Water, Warborn, anything, anything with a soldier and, and uh, Warborn set. Did I get a new microphone? Wait, is this one old? I mean, is this one different than usual? I mean, it's no, it's it's the same as like the last past two years. Pretty much. That is Godzilla in Japanese. I am aware, yeah. I do be aware, yes. Sounds unusually crisp. Maybe I did like. Why Maybe I finally like put the right filters on it now. I, I did change the filters a bit like a couple of days ago. You're here. So You're maybe here. those aren't like fucked anymore at least. Pet Warlord. <laughs> bad chest, dude. Bad chest. Uh, use your speedrun route for leveling. Took 2 hours to 55 shrines, level 40. Thanks. Nice, nice, nice. Baby steps, baby steps. I mean, I assume you focused a bit, maybe like too much on the devotion shrines compared to like leveling, but no. Yeah. We found the infamous leg plates of Valor, which are pretty much the best of 40 pounds in the game, to be honest. Very nice, especially for speed leveling. Good it's fair, I wanted to play ultimate and doing that without the shrines or without augments is really rough. Yeah, 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 it, it is really. S tier is basically can clear all celestials and like A can't kill one of them or wants the measure. What's the measure? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's like a mix of Celestials and like... How good it is at like farming Shadow Realm or like farming Crucible. Like Gladiator 1, 50 to 170, of course, and like Shadow Realm 75 to 76 are usually like the, the measures. And on Hardcore, of course, you want like some, some more survivability on top in there. Alright, let's bring the ashes back to these guys. But also, like, of course, like, ratings are always subjective. Even the most objective rating is still, like, a little bit subjective. Like, for Johnny, for example, S tier builds don't require any buttons to press. So he's like a... Like a Maya build enjoyer, I guess. I am still not respected? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, how long is this gonna take? I can't even like do bounties, right? Holy, that's a scuffed. What can I do even? Killing Chthonians and... Okay, maybe if we just like kill the boss of this act, of Act 4, then we should be respected, hopefully. Maybe they will finally respect me then if I kill like a literal god or like rather some kind of weird abomination of a god, or manifestation of a god. <clears throat> Internal trauma, false wave, S tier, since it does all the content including the league. Yeah, I mean, it, that's one is like, like, S tier, not because it's like a quick farmer. I mean, it can do all the farm, but it's more like S tier or like A plus tier, because it do, like, can do like all the set assists like super easily. Alright, Slay Commander Lucius, let's see. I mean, I feel like some builds are just like actually really, really good builds for farming. Um, but because of like some of their stats not quite required, like um, meeting the requirements for certain Celestial bosses, I mean, they can still, like, still kill bosses, but it's gonna be like very, very much um, like scarier to kill them and like unsafer and slower to kill them because you have, have to like hide a lot more. Stuff like that. Like, for example, that like one pet Dirish build. I think it was actually like decently fast for like farming. I mean, I would still like call it like a B tier build. But it was like still a decent like build for farming. Um, and I think you can also like actually kill Ravager. Might have to like run around and circus a bit, and maybe it's not like that quick, but it can do it. Pretty sure. But you can't like face tank or like kill it in like sub two minutes. Stuff like that. Like some of the S tier builds. You're actually considering Maya's pet conjurer build. But if you just make it, literally nothing in the build will be yours. You would just copy paste it because you have no idea what to improve. I mean, yeah, I mean, her builds are usually like either actually properly min maxed for even damage or like at least like min maxed for. Damage slash laziness, right? Like the most damage you can get while still like being like super lazy and like requiring like as little buttons to press as possible. This is also a good uh, helmet for Arcanus castles, as you can see, like getting more duration on your like mirror. Pretty neat. Aggressive of attack. Wow. Okay. It's funny. It's a pretty good roll, is it not?
Yeah, cocktail, cocktail is, cocktail is a good skill. What can I say? Fast track would look the same, balance is perfect. Honestly, damage wise, fire strike wouldn't be worse right now. The problem with fire strike is that or like maybe not a lot worse, but maybe like only slightly worse. The problem is that um, for cocktail you like throw it, right? You throw it once and then you just run, keep running. For fire strike you have to like keep shooting and standing still to damage. AoE on Fire Strike, Mod Strike? I mean, Brimstone and Explosive Strike are fine actually for AoE. But yeah, I mean, it is worse. Like, I'm not saying it's 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 as good as this. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's not even close. I would disagree, but it is definitely worse, yeah. I mean, it's like playing Poisonous Concoction, right? Like... I guess, but that's also PoE and this is Grimdawn. Do I have a list with good builds to play? Uh, I guess these. Some of them might be a bit better, some of them might be a bit worse. But all of them are... I mean, usually like I always explain like what content I did in all of those uh, builds. Some of them might be like one or two patches old, but I'm pretty sure like pretty much all of them still work. Half, maybe like one or two of them. Uh, what's my favorite build to play? Most fun that can do all game content. Honestly, the most fun build I've played like recently, I think, was the Vitality ranged Promise Strike Ritualist. But that one you can only play like in the league. So it has like some, like at least one item that you need from the league, kind of. I mean, you can play the same build as well, like in vanilla. Either it's melee or like with another gun that's like a bit worse. Um, the last vanilla build that was really really fun for me. Uh, hmm. Oh, that's so much fun. I don't know, it was like ranged Prana Strike gameplay, but like actually good for endgame, you know. I don't know, I kinda, I kinda enjoy that. It has like some, like, some pass through. Not like too much, but like some. Yeah, the league or season. Um, I mean, you, as you might have already figured, right, Grim Dawn doesn't have like any online play usually. It doesn't have like any seasons or leagues like Path of Exile or Diablo has. Um, but the community has basically made seasons of their own instead, right? So they're like community like. seasons. Think of like what was it called in Diablo 2 with like there were some like mods for Diablo 2 that also like had seasons. Basically that, just like for Grim Dawn, and the seasons in the Grim Dawn, I like the Grim Dawn seasons. Think of them of basically the base game, right? Like not too many changes to the base game, like almost none to the base game. Uh, maybe like end game is a tiny bit harder. There are like additional Celestia bosses. Like Grim Dawn itself has six Celestia bosses, right? The league adds another six on top, so you have like twelve end game bosses. Um, the last league also added the 
skating system from Shattered Realm to boundless, like to the dungeons, right? You could like basically do higher levels of like Steps of Torment, for example, or Bastion of Chaos and so on. Like all of those like roguelike dungeons had higher level versions of them, like with different keys, similar to like how Shattered Realm works, right? Like you have like different waystones in Shattered Realm. And in the leagues, you also had like different keys for the dungeons, for the higher level dungeons. Basically like a second end game in that regard. Um, the league also adds more like monster frequency to like some of the enemies in the vanilla game, but also the league added basically like an entire new act, like an act eight kind of. The act is not quite finished yet, like lengthwise. It will be finished for season five though, like for the next season, which will come out of this year. And the online play, there's like a dedicated launcher. I mean, right now there is not. You can just play the um, season four mod as a like standalone mod, like offline on your like on your system, just like any other mod. But when the league is actually live, um, you will have like a dedicated launcher, um, a ladder on the website, right, where you get like points depending on like what content you're doing. Um, it's not like race oriented like some other things sometimes like from other RPGs that's more like um, I mean you get like points for like doing stuff in the story and then you get points also like for doing like certain end game content and like whoever like pushes the deepest and like for example Shadow Realm or like the deepest into like the dungeons and so on gets like additional points so like the ladder is kind of like pushing those that end game and also of course you need to like do the like all the end game bosses to have like a reliable chance at like being in the top 10 and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, also the launcher and so on, um, basically checks whether you're like cheating with GD stash and stuff like that. Like there's, uh, basically like cheat protection, which the base game doesn't have at all, right? I mean, it's like local, all files local on your PC. Uh, you can do with them whatever you want. And the launcher basically, I mean, we had to like run some kind of launcher to make sure that, um, people aren't cheating and there's like actual fair competition, you know? Because otherwise you might just like boot up GD stash and... Yeah, that doesn't really like work in a in a system where you want to have at least like some competitive uh, aspect to it. But I mean, the league is not all about like competitiveness. Like you can just play the league and think of it as like another like mini expansion to the game, um, and like just ignore the ladder completely. There's also like um, when the league is like online. There is also like a global chat bottom left, so like you can chat with other people who are also playing the league. So yeah, I mean it's it's basically like a like a proper online experience, just like for Grim Dawn. And uh, I mean you can also trade with people if you want. Like it's, I mean we had like two letters, like hardcore solo self bound and uh, softcore trade. So if you're playing softcore, you can also trade with other people who are also playing the league. Yeah, yeah, some of the videos that I had on YouTube were like from Last League, from Season 4. The global chat was like from the Last League, yeah. But yep, yep, yep. Uh, can you play with friends? Currently the League is not really balanced for multiplayer, so for the ladder aspect, multiplayer is not allowed, but you can like play the League um, content like as a standalone mod uh like but friends i think and multiplayer as well i'm not sure how the situation is right now when it comes to playing multiplayer and also like playing via the launcher i don't think that's like really supported right now but if you're playing like with friends you can just like hang out in discord or wherever like in voice chat right and like play with your friends there um, so currently it's like all balanced around single player um, if you want to like do leaderboard stuff as well but yeah, if you just want to like play the content um, I mean you can play it right now with friends as well already right you can just like go to, to to this link right that I just posted earlier as well um, and you can like download the mod there and uh, enjoy the additional content there um, the additional content there will, of course, not have, like... Uh, right now, at least, it will not have, uh, like, global chat and so on. Because all of that is, like, server-based, and the servers are 
right now shut down. They will be online when the next league arrives, which will be at some point this year. We don't have an ETA yet. I mean, hopefully at some point this spring, like late spring maybe. But we'll see, we'll see. Like maybe May, something like that, we'll see. I mean, ideally between like the next PUE League start and the Diablo 4 release, which will be, I and mean, PUE League start should be like late March, maybe early April. Uh, the Seapok Mind Appear is like early March. Diablo 4 is gonna be like June, right? So hitting like a late, late April window would be ideal, I will say. Do you think the developers will make more DLCs for us? Uh, it is confirmed that they will not. They have the last patch that added content and with which developers called this game content complete was two years ago. So since two years there is no new content. Which is why modders have taken over, kind of. And I'm getting a DC even playing Grim Dawn. What the hell? Oh my god. Alright. Time to call my ISP tomorrow. What the hell? Alright, I gotta blame last epoch servers for de seeing me in Grim Dawn, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 terrible recently. Like this weekend it's just been terrible, I don't know what's wrong. Like I have to call the ISP tomorrow. Alright. Anyway, we're back here, let's continue playing the game. Alright, Mr. Big Panties. Good night, good night. Thanks for being here today and uh, yeah. Sleep well, sleep well. Sorry for crushing your dreams about far gone levels. At least for now. <laughs> At least for the next couple of seasons, I guess. I mean, we'll see. There, there might be like some... I mean, like literally like infinite progression is never gonna be a thing, I think, in the seasons. Like, maybe like introducing some new ways of like getting like one additional skill point or something like that at some point. Sure, I can think about that, but... Like, infinite progression is not, never gonna be a thing, no. Yeah, we, I rather want to, like, introduce content that, like, makes you want to roll more characters, either by making content, like, hard for certain builds, and then you have to build make another build. Which kind of already exists, like, with the super bosses, though. Like, some of them are easier on other builds. And others are easier on, on former builds, right? Um, and also just like making lots of new like interesting items for you guys to check out and like to recraft around and like have fun making new builds because of that. Exactly. The only gorge that has been completed is with pet builds, really. I'm pretty sure Plasma's gonna finish his Arcanas run, like Plasma's a good player, Plasma knows how Arcanas works. He's no... He's no noob to... To Arcanas, like to the game. Yeah, I, I think like the, the Grim Dawn seasons, like for example last season I think had like actually enough content for like people to... To grind their teeth on still. Like, even without, like, infinite progression, there's enough content. Technically, Magi did demo, yeah. I think, like, Diff, like, still refuses to acknowledge it because, like, Magi, like, used, like, one or two items for stash or something like that, I don't know. I don't know, like, which items those exactly were and, like, how nit nitpicky that is, but... Wasn't that true? Okay. I mean, just do it again, right? Like, I don't know which items you were using, but I mean... I 
depending on like which items you were using, of course it can be made a lot easier compared to like an actual gore stack. You were using Negan's ribbon. Huh? What? Because you had the Negan's ribbon like pre-farmed or what? I mean, you can just farm Negan's Ribbon in like two seconds anyway. Anyway, um, we are here about to seal the Logorion back to where it belongs. Uh, yeah, should get the Maven Sphere Protection. Honestly, you just like get this and max it out like it's so good. Like percent absorption. These are like basically more effective HP. Gorstack is dying out with another one. Mm, I mean, that's that, that's like a failed Gorstack. Oh yeah, you were using all kinds of items for shared stash, right? I think a, a true gore stack is like SSF, like you cannot use shit stash, uh, shared stash, right? Yeah, yeah, no, then it's fair. Like if you use like all kinds of stuff from stash, then yeah, it's not an actual gore stack, right? See you, Agrum. No. Alright, just spend fireballs, spend your cocktails on this. And yep. That is a boss. Magi doesn't use clusters because they're for cowards. Uh huh. Is that you, mother? Come see what's left of my wares. Alright, Logorian shoulders. Are like never bad because they always have physical resistance, percent offensive ability, and percent defensive ability as like an implicit. Saru. All right, um, I'm gonna stop here. This was basically like vanilla Grim Dawn. I right, act one to four. Apart from like grabbing a uh, teleport rune, I mean teleport movement ability from the Conclave. This is basically all of the vanilla game, right? Like act one to four, the base game, so to say. Next, we're gonna jump into the expansions, Mammoth and Forgotten Gods. 
until then I'll see you maybe on another video maybe on another video maybe on Twitch maybe on YouTube we will see we will see thanks for watching guys I will see you around on the next one YouTube um, before we go to the actual goodbye part though we will quickly kill Anasteria because we don't need her on this playthrough because we are like fully evil on this playthrough right we just kill her as well yep there's a piece all right Oh, she also has dropped her pantsu. Hmm. Might be actually useful. Alright, thanks for watching, guys.